Well, hello there, friends, and welcome to Virtual Show. Soon to be strangers in the night, what's known as the Monday Show. The only <laughs> late night VR talk show. I'm your host, Wes. With me, as always, my good friend, Roots. Roots! What a show we got lined up tonight, brother. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy. And you, I got kind of confused there with all the different names we've had for the show. Hopefully, people aren't confused. Although, I think the final... Well, maybe final strangers of the night, maybe who knows six months from now, it might be something else. But uh, actually, somebody was in the discord recently talking about the Monday show and it blew me away. I was like, wow, that's like a long time ago. It's not the Wednesday. Somebody said, no, that's Wednesday, bro. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's a crazy week and uh, it's a crazy time in VR. And it's been a crazy conversation in discord that sometimes that's just blowing me away. Yeah, uh, you know, we we uh, we spilled a, spent a good long time building the Monday Show brand. That's the reason why it was so difficult to uh, leave it behind. And I was actually looking back through all of our Monday shows. Um, you know, that playlist is a hundred episodes deep now, which it, it has all the shows since we changed the name. But uh, we we did a lot of them that were called the Monday Show, and. Um, the reason I was looking back through them is because of our topic today. We're we're talking about PlayStation 5 VR and the future of gaming in general. And as I was thinking over the last few days about uh, all the different angles that we're going to be approaching this from tonight, uh, it reminded me of an episode we did uh, before on the Monday show. And looking back through the playlist, it was a year ago, almost to the day. Like it's within a week of uh, of exactly one year where we did the episode called uh, What Will Define the Next Generation of Gaming. And uh, it's an interesting watch because this was before we knew anything about Quest 2. It was before we had uh, the, the new graphics cards or the new consoles. None of this stuff was out yet. And we were just basically engaging in a little bit of speculation on what the new features uh, were expected to be in the next generation of gaming and what underlying uh, feature really kind of tied them all together. And it was a really interesting watch and we came to a really interesting conclusion. And I feel that things are starting to bear out now what we said you know, all the way back then. So for that reason, uh, I feel like that conversation is an interesting addendum and backdrop to the one we're going to have today. So I linked it in the description down below. Oh, well, wow. It's exciting. Cause I was just thinking, oh man, I don't want to go back and find that, but lazy roots gets to watch it and doesn't even have to go, have to go through all the trouble you did to, to link it. So I appreciate that. How crazy, right? One year ago and, uh, uh, Westerdamas and the roots did it again. Um, although I haven't watched it, so maybe I was way off base but uh um definitely want to go back and look that for sure well still a lot of it is yet to play out but we're starting to see things heading in the direction that uh that we talked about all those months ago so i thought it would be interesting to link it below uh dave station vr showing up in the chat early on yeah. getting the tip train rolling thank you dave for the uh, two dollar donation i'm glad you're here hopefully you can uh, hang in for the uh the topic at the end of the show as it is uh uh, a topic that I'm, I'm quite sure is uh, you're, you're probably tired of talking about at this point, but uh, we're, we're excited like you guys are about where PlayStation VR and where it's going. Yeah, it's crazy, man. We've got the expert in the house. So definitely let us know if uh, you agree with what we're saying for sure. And uh, excited to talk about it. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, a lot of show to, to get to today. Just a quick programming note. Uh, we decided to uh, talk about the Wizards Dark Times next week on Oculus Quest uh, because we've got uh, we're, we're probably going to go three hours. We're going to try not to, but we, we've got a lot to talk about this week. And we felt like uh, the Wizards might kind of get overshadowed by some of these other things today. And we didn't want to sell them short. So uh, we will be talking about the Wizards Dark Times on Oculus Quest on next week's late night uh, show. So uh, be sure to tune in there for that. And if someone's really interested whether or not they should buy the game, uh, just ask me, uh, you know, in the Discord, and I'll tell you anything you need to know about it. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. 
Uh, Radio Runs eating ice cream right now. Butter ice cream and uh, throwing a fiber at us. We appreciate that for sure. He can co- eating cookie butter ice cream, he says right now. So, like, uh, he, he's eating it and then the uh, our pint's on him, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Radio Run. I needed some of that uh, for sure. And um, Dave Station is enjoying RE8 so much that he uh, may or may not be able to uh, keep himself contained enough to stick around for the conversation and i keep hearing that from derail and a lot of people and uh dave i'm i'm gonna confess right now i i've almost bought it a couple times now wes um and i had already told myself i was gonna wait for vr and i don't know if i'm gonna be able to wait for vr i'm gonna have to probably try to vorpex it or something yeah well i'm in the same boat right because i I love resident evil and um you know we do have people in the community talking about how awesome it is and we even have pd who's made two videos now at this point on how great it is in Vorpex. So um, it's tempting, right? You know, I want to hold out and play it in VR, but if, uh, if I'm relegated to Vorpex, I mean, so be it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, um, you know, lots to talk about. Let, let's not dilly dally. Let's uh, let's kick things off the way we always do by saying hello to our friends in chat. Now, Wolveraz is here, and uh, he just went ahead and saved us the time of having to do the Wizards uh, review discussion, mm-hmm. which he says it's amazing. So uh, there you have it, folks. The Wizards 2 is amazing. That we can say without talking about it, uh, since we're going to be going into detail. And I think that was actually a good uh, decision to make. Like you said, uh, it's too good of a game to have it fall underneath all the other news and everything else so we'll showcase it next week and uh it'll be a good conversation and it'll give me more time to play in it so yeah it, it is a good game but you know it, if you guys have played it on pc then uh the gameplay is is nearly identical really all of our uh all of our our review discussion is going to be about are the differences between the pc and the and the quest version but uh, the gameplay is not one of those the gameplay is nearly identical yep absolutely uh, Oculus Game Cat, vaping drumstick ice cream right now. You know, uh, that sounds delicious. Uh, I myself am doing, um, let's see here. This is caramel apple fritter. Oh, God, man. What do you guys think about, both of you, think about the, well, maybe it's rumors, maybe it's not, but I thought they were supposed to be getting rid of all that, along with menthol cigarettes, which they, I uh, just blew me away. I was like, there's going to be a lot of pissed off people, bro. It went away for a little while. There was a, a certain kind of flavoring that mm-hmm. they outlawed. Okay. And, uh, you know, incidentally, it was the thing that uh, kind of put a, the kibosh on that VR smell vision thing that was in Kickstarter that, that was using that same, uh, that same chemical. So they had to uh, take that thing off the market. But uh, I guess that the, the, the new stuff kind of uh, is an exception to the rule. I, I don't know. Uh, but it went away for a while and it came back. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, good for you guys, right? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ray Delator says, uh, I'm definitely getting it now. I guess he's talking about the Wizards. Uh, he was waiting on our opinion on it. Yeah, well, again, there are there are some differences versus the PC version, but gameplay isn't one of them. It's, it's one-to-one gameplay. Yeah, yeah. Well, op- op- obviously... Uh... It sounds amazing, and um, I want to play more. So, so uh, thanks for for stopping by, Ray. Uh, of course, we've already said hello to Dave Station. Mash Daddy's in the house as he always is. Same could be said for Mapper. Says hopefully I'll be playing a little bit of Zenith tomorrow. They're bringing uh, a server up just for us to crash it. I'll be interested to hear what you think about it, Mapper. I've heard different things. I've heard people say it's awesome. Uh, you know. Our, our friend uh, Mateo three one one, not too hyped about it at all. Uh, so I'll be interested to hear what uh, what you think about it. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Oculus Game Cat says I make my own juice. You know who else makes their own juice? <laughs> my mom. Oh yeah, she does. Let me know it's what the. Nasty, um, isn't it? Uh, I hope <laughs> it does sound messy. Let me know how the stream looks because I'm seeing some bouncing rates again here. So I don't know what the hell is going on. Maybe you're right. Maybe there was a scene in there or something. Maybe it's this scene. We just get, need to get rid of the scene with us. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe we should just uh, become voices instead of uh, talking heads, huh? Yeah. Anyway, uh, Wolveraza in the house. Uh, let's see who else here. Space Denison. What's up, Void Cat? Spry Guy in the house. 
Uh, and there's the game cat. Decepticon, ET2K9 now. And uh, the crew. Looks like the crew is almost all here. Scott Merrill is here, which uh, looks like Scott changed his name midstream. He's a.k.a. the Oculus Game Cat. Yeah, yeah. He said he, he couldn't take it anymore. He was going to switch it. <laughs> and um, uh, Wolverosa says uh, menthol is what he smokes. So maybe he will be quitting uh, because that is the rumor. There is, a, I think Dave said he saw that as well. So menthol cigarettes out. Like everything else. Talk, ab talk about systemic racism, Roots. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah, dude. I, I was shocked, man, when I saw that. I was like, man, they're just wanting to piss people off. Yeah, they're, they're trying to foment unrest for sure now. They're not even trying to hide it anymore. <laughs> it all started with cigarettes. We never would have thought it, right? Right, right, right. That, that's what the history books will say. The ones that aren't burnt in the, uh, the coming months and years anyway uh let, let's talk about um let's talk about some games roots and we've got some uh good stuff to talk about i'm sure many people are tuning in to hear what we think about demio i said it right this time demio uh but before we do that i, I want to kind of give some first impressions of zero caliber reloaded you know um zero caliber Re reloaded is the oculus quest version of the popular pc co-op first person shooter uh it's coming to oculus quest tomorrow and as such it is under embargo we can't really go deep on this game uh the way we normally would but uh, the developers were kind enough to give us permission to kind of uh do a preview first impressions sort of talk here so that's exactly uh what we're going to do so um Again, this is coming to Oculus Quest Store tomorrow for Oculus Quest, as well as Oculus Quest 2. It is from uh, developer X-Real Games, and we want to, as always, go ahead and thank the good people at X-Real Games for providing Roots and I with review access. Um, so Roots, you know, going into this one, right off the bat, it kicks you into the tutorial, and, uh, you know, outside of a few visual differences uh i was looking for something vastly different from what the pc version was but you know at least through the tutorial this this is pretty identical isn't it yeah yeah it was definitely uh you know although man i i i must say i felt like the gunplay was improved and i i um i have to go back to the pc version and try it out but um <laughs> So is the stream is the stream still going? No, I'm assuming I can see it. So I'm assuming it just blipped out for a second there. But uh, yeah, as soon as Wes brought up systemic racism, everything went, um, <laughs> or the menthol talk. That is very true. But yeah, no, I um, I was I was very shocked, Wes, that uh, the guns felt so good. And I don't uh, know that we are up actually. Uh, it says YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain streaming. Hmm. I don't know why I why would I see the the stream. If people don't see the stream, I don't know. Because I got it up. Now it is kind of uh, doing some weird stuff here. You guys let me know when we come back. If we're back, let us know. I'm not getting anything in my uh, in my uh, window here. It's, it's showing me nothing. Man, it says the new stream has started. Uh, I can see myself talking on there. Uh, so I'm I'm thinking it's working. Hmm. The new stream has started, uh, Mepper says. So are we back now? Someone say someone say that we're definitely back. Yeah, Wolveraza says it was a blip. Uh, so it's still there. I mean, I've been watching it this whole time. Now it has a couple of hitches <laughs> every once in a while, but I don't know. Okay, good. We're back. So uh, we'll, we'll ixnay on the acism ray, huh? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, you two. <laughs> we, we promise. Um, forbidden language is not mm -hmm. permitted roots yeah well that's we're living in that day right um but uh anyway let, let's talk about zero caliber reloaded and in case uh in case youtube didn't let it get out uh we want to thank the good people at x real games for providing roots and i with review access and we were just talking about at least through the beginning of the game when it puts you through the tutorial uh you know visuals aside uh it's pretty identical to the pc version yeah yeah absolutely and uh with the exception of like i was saying i was shocked at if i felt the, like the gunplay was was real even better um just felt really good so uh 
Wolverazza. Yeah. I think you're I think you're within luck. He said he pretty much figured he's he's already decided to buy this game in his mind. Yeah, uh I, I noticed that there was some extra stability in the gunplay as well. Or at least it seems like there was. It didn't seem um as shaky, you know, holding these guns. Um you know, uh, beyond the uh, as you move beyond the tutorial, you move into the the, the lobby area. And I feel like um, and again, we don't want to do a full review of it here. We have to watch ourselves, but uh, much improved. The, the, the user interface overall is uh, much easier to navigate. It was way easier to uh, load into a, 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 a co-op game. I remember when you and I did the PC version, we had all sorts of trouble getting into the same match. Um, not a problem here we booted right in and uh and had no issue playing together yeah sure um so uh roots uh you know once you get into the uh to, to the levels and the gameplay specifically uh i felt like um what they're saying here wasn't entirely untrue this is a bit of a different game uh, as far as how the levels are structured, right? Yeah, yeah. It didn't seem it seemed like everything flowed really well. Um, kind of like everything that we had issues with the first or the PC version was was fixed or not fixed, but just improved upon. Right. So the 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 levels themselves are um, similar. They're they're very similar to the PC version. Uh, you know, not only the specific levels, but the campaign as a whole, kind of. Uh, very similar in structure to the PC version. Uh, just kind of streamlined a little bit, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And Mash Daddy throwing a fiver at the for the new stream. He said, "We're gonna get all new tips." And man, that's the whole that's the gimmick, Wes. I'll just keep stopping the stream and restarting <laughs> it. Ah, you got to tip again, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, so uh, the the train keeps a rolling. It doesn't matter what kind of bumps come in the road, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one thing that I do plan on doing, Wes, that I haven't had a chance to do um, is take my gun stock into this game. And because uh, we got to do some uh, San Locky gun stock stuff for a conversation, um, hopefully soon. Uh, we haven't really discussed, but uh, um, and then looking at this, man, I um, one of the best things about this is the versatility of the weapons and uh, um, just attachments and stuff. So uh, I want to do some more of that as well. Uh, yeah, me too. You know, uh, it had crossed my mind that maybe I should, uh, you know, break out the gun stock. But then, you know, I'm not very experienced with it. And I didn't want my experience to be all about the gun stock as opposed to the game. Because, again, what, you know, I only played so much of it because I knew that we couldn't do a full review. And I, I knew if I played through the thing that uh, that's exactly what we would do is we, we'd come on here and uh, and give a review whether we meant to or not. So, uh <laughs> So I only played a little bit of it, and I didn't want that to be about the gun stock, so I kind of left the gun stock to the side. Uh, but with that said, uh, again, I, you know, the, the improvements in the Quest version over the PC version makes it very likely that when we do have our ultimate, you know, gun stock episode, that the reloaded version of Zero Caliber will be among the games that I play. Yeah, I agree. Um, and Dave Station is throwing a uh, fiver and, and suggesting some some topics we should talk about that will definitely kill the stream. And uh, <laughs> definitely will don't kill it that. with uh, will it kill it with uh, thirty <laughs> mortar rockets coming over? Never, never mind. No. Oh god. Um, and Ray throwing a fiver and Wolveraza says he's broke joke mofo, but support where he can. We appreciate every bit that everybody supports. You guys are awesome. Yeah, thanks, Ray. Thanks, Wolvie, for uh, throwing in the the $3 tip on top of the uh, the pledge that you just recently made in our uh, Patreon. We appreciate the support and, uh, you know, are working diligently to uh, to improve your experience when consuming our content. More to come on that very, very soon. Very soon. Indeed. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Dave. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Wolvie. We really appreciate the support. It's uh, it means a lot. It does absolutely. And I, I, you know, whoever's throwing these grenades, I didn't do that well, Wes. Um, I did. I mean, I, I, I was so. It feels really good throwing the grenades. I'm just not that good at act, at throwing them. Yeah, it takes a little practice to get used to it. You know what? The really cool thing about this uh, 
this game is, is you can pull the pin with your teeth. So if you can if you, you grab really? the grenade, yeah, if you grab the grenade yeah. and hold it up to your mouth, it uh, it disengages the pin and you can just throw it. Oh wow! Um, Et two K nine says toot toot. I mean toot toot. Five dollar throwing <laughs> throwing uh, keeping the chain uh, train going. And um, I didn't know that about my your teeth. You know, I did see. I felt like the uh, the the buttons were more streamlined too. Like you know how when you whenever you're going to use shoot stuff um you go to hit the the grip all the time to pull on your rack and everything and i was confused because it wasn't working but it was the other button and i was like and same thing with a grenade and i was like oh my god why does every game not do this um because they're different buttons and it made it so much easier so much streamlined um and uh and i'll leave it at that because i really will start to give a review here yeah, intuitive controls, uh, not only with regards to reloading and throwing grenades, but, uh, re you know, ducking, jumping, it has, uh, it defaults into automatically run, so you don't have to click the run if you don't want to, it just runs all the time. Um, yeah, another highlight of the game is the control scheme. Pretty much, I think, uh, streamlined, you know, they should have called this zero caliber streamlined because yeah. that's pretty much what it is it's uh it's a more efficient easier to play more intuitive version uh of, than its pc counterpart absolutely and i don't want to jinx anything Wes, but the, the the drop frames stop it's green now and i see roots is all happy it's because i when i look over there and i see a a red square it stresses me out Wes. and uh, i want to well, be careful with that green. talk and you know red square is one of those forbidden <laughs> uh terms that you can't really say <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, I didn't mean it that way, YouTube. Oh, and it just came back. Uh, they're pissed now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave says, tell me it didn't die again. Please tell me it didn't die again. Yeah, well, I did see a drop there. From, it went red for a second, but it didn't die. I can still see it. So, you know, so that's kind of, uh, I guess, Michelle or is your um, is your uh, your canary in a coal mine. She can tell you, yeah, I'm, you can I'm see it on there because you can't see the stream for some reason, right? Yeah, well, I mean, it's just, uh, it says the stream's current bit rate is higher than the recommended uh, thing is all, what it's telling me now. We we recommend it use a stream bit rate of 4,500. Good Lord, that's low. Yeah, um, yeah we usually like quadruple that. Yeah, it, it crashed again, though. We might want to try to dial it back and see if that helps. Dial it back to eight or 10,000 uh if uh because we dropped again and uh, we're back again yeah spry says no problems here the problem is is for me to dial it back i have to stop the stream and restart it uh, I got you. there's I got no you. way to to do that well we'll go if it crashes again maybe we'll try that yeah so anyway i i think i don't know what you know when it dropped out or, or what you guys caught or, or didn't catch but the the name of the game here is uh, they should have called it zero caliber streamlined because that's what what's going on here. This is very similar to the PC version, but it's more slim, streamlined, more intuitive, easier to play, easier to get into a game and easier to meet up with your friends um, out tomorrow on the Oculus Quest store. Uh, and uh, if this is your type of game and you liked it on PC, then I don't think you're going to be disappointed on Quest. Absolutely. And I, I see what's happening now, Wes. They're getting extra commercial advertisement. They said every time it drops, they have to reload and watch a commercial. So hopefully it's a good commercial. I'm not a big fan of commercials, but if it's a good one, you might enjoy it. So, uh, Although I don't know that there's any good commercials left out there anymore, Wes. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I don't watch them, so I <laughs> couldn't tell you. <laughs> Only time I watch them is if they force me to. Like I, if I go into big screen and I want to watch, like if I just go to one of their channels and I watch um, Survivor or whatever it is, you're going to watch the commercials. And that's like the only time I've ever been forced to in like a decade. So it's really very stressful. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I say I watch a few things on television, but I really don't. Not anymore. Like, you know, I watch some stuff on YouTube occasionally, uh, you know, but it's all like, you know uh, without parole or you know uh, pd gamer tag vr uh i watch a little bit of uh, ufc related stuff uh, but as far as like traditional television shows and movies and stuff like that i, I really don't watch very much anymore at all yeah well, that's the quality of television 
Dave Station says he, uh, for some reason, it says he's the only one watching on his app. Well, I see 17 people, and uh, that's probably not correct either. Um, so who knows what uh, what YouTube is doing? No, yeah, just... mine mine's not. It was not even running on my screen. It, it's just turning. The, the little loop thing is turning. Mm. So I, I can't tell what's going on here. I'm just going to keep talking and assume people are hearing it. I hope so because uh, you know a lot of people tuning in to hear what we think about the De Demio, and um, we've had this game for some time now. Thanks to our friends at, at Resolution Games, uh, they let us have review access um, pretty pretty far in advance of the release date here with this one, and uh, I'm glad they did because um, you know we we've said it many times on uh, on our channel here that it's almost a constant search for us. You know, through all these new games that we get to try, uh, we're looking for something unique and it's not very often that you actually find something that is truly unique not only to vr but to the gaming as a whole but i kind of feel like that's what we have here and and the the one thing that demio has going for it above everything else is that it is a very original unique concept especially within the vr space yeah and there's not too many games where you can really just kind of chill and hang out with your your friends i mean this is that you're going to spend a couple hours you better like these people this is not one that i would want to play with um somebody that's a random that i don't like not saying that there aren't good random games out there because i've actually had a, a couple or heard of a couple of people that have, i haven't played any randoms i'm still scared to because it is really is a long time to spend with um people you don't know and if they turn out to be jerks then uh um, and i've heard some horror stories where people are just opening doors wes you don't want to just willy-nilly open doors in this game, bro. You kind of want, there's, it's strategy. You know, it takes a lot of strategy. And actually, I'm going to unload a little bit of strategy I, I learned from Derail today. He said that uh, he learned two things. One, the bone card um, will make a hound turn friendly. Um, so, like, if you have a hound, throw him a bone, and, uh, and that'll be good. And I, I'm trying to think of what, the, there was a second one. It was even more profound than that um it'll come back to me but uh but there's a lot of tricks and stuff that i didn't even know as far as card wise right things that will just um just aren't obvious but they when you hear it oh that's what it was it was the lie you know there's a card that has a lie right and, um and i'm like what would you use this for but apparently the lie card will kill the bit giant slimes in one shot and they're like 22 damage and they they, they some of these things Wes you don't want to let them run around doing stuff man you need to take out certain things fast and you find out very like the mystics man no big deal they can't even damage you but before long they're teleporting all sorts of enemies around you and you're screwed and uh so there's there's a lot of strategy strategy to this game and um I like it because it makes me think uh and a lot of games don't make me think very much so yeah, uh, well, well, that's the thing here. You know, last week we talked about Star Wars VR Pinball. And, you know, while that's a cool game, uh, we kind of described it as 90% novelty and 10% gameplay, right? Or I, I did. I described it uh, in that fashion. And to be honest, you know, I, I thought coming into this game that – uh, a lot of the appeal of it was going to be like the pinball game novelty. And it certainly is. There's a lot of that at play here. Uh, but what I didn't account for was just how uh, much the strategic element of the game uh, gives it uh, that kind of uh, replay value, right? So even though you're, you're kind of doing the same thing every time that you load into a game with your friends, um, it is a very strategic turn, turn based, uh, game. And, you know, the novelty is something that just kind of, uh, uh, keeps you engaged with the game. But uh, at the end of the day, the, the game itself is a very fun and challenging, uh, thing to engage in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all about hanging out with your friends. And, uh, to just to show that I've got Diz's back, he said the audio cut out on my second tip and he really wanted to hear it. My second tip was there's a, a lie card, a card that uh, says L Y I E, I think. I think that's how they spell it. Um, like the, the chemical, right? And uh, that card will eliminate the 
the large slime, the big slime in one shot. And I did not know that, which is amazing because those things are messed up and they, they leave slime all over Wes and they spawn these little slimes and uh, it is crazy. And this is one of those games that um, I, it just grows on me more and more. Although, uh, you know, like you teased in the um, opening, I think it was in the opening or maybe it was just talking about it beforehand. Uh, there are some things that aren't wrong with the game, but we wish there was uh, differences, right? Like um, I, I want, I said it before, I want a dungeon master. You know, I want um, somebody else controlling the story, um, which I don't think that's going to come in this game. I said, this is a different type of game. This is a building block for the game that I want in that respect. Uh, but for what this is, which is a um, an amazing dungeon crawler board game, um, it's it's done very well. Yeah, and I certainly have a wish list myself uh, of what I would like from the game going forward. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the strengths of the game and uh, and what I like about it first. That way, uh, well, what I wish for it will make a little bit more sense in that context. Uh, so I'm sure, as many of you know, this is all this is a uh, a turn based role playing game dungeon crawler, and um, it's set like a board game. So literally you come into a room, which is a cool looking room, by the way, to, to hang out in uh, you and up to three other people. And I assume most of the time it's going to be your friends. I don't know how many of us are actually going into this thing, trying to play with randoms. Um, but, uh, you, you know, even though it's a board game sitting on a, a, t a table right in front of you, you can zoom down into it on ground level, which is actually uh, really fun to do. And uh, it, it staying at that viewpoint uh, really kind of adds challenge to the game routes because you can't see what's around the next corner so much when you're down on ground level. But what I really thought was cool about it when you're playing like that uh, the directional audio is like any other VR game or any other good VR game. So you might not be able to hear or, or see what's around the corner, but you'll certainly hear that there's something over there, right? Yeah. Or even if the if you haven't been in that area or if like uh, you moved out of that area and things are moving around in the dark um, and you are above it, you can't see what's going on over there, but you can hear stuff moving around. Um, and sometimes that's kind of creepy because you don't know what the hell it is that's over there. Or um, like I was, we, you know, you're watching different stuff going on and you're just trying to decide what to do, which way to go. And um, we were playing one game and somebody was like, well, I want to go this way. And I was like, no, dude, there's a guy there. Like he, I saw him and he went down and I was like, there's no other way he could have gone. Right. And sure enough, that's exactly what he did. But nobody else saw it but me. Right. And so um, I, I saved the day, Wes. I don't want to call myself a hero, but I'm a hero, bro. I, I can't believe how good I did. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, and then the, I, the, the whole thing about zooming into that table, I don't know how anybody plays it any other way. People are complaining about their neck hurting. Every time I hear that, I'm thinking, why are you outside the table, dude? Like if I was playing this game on a TV, or if I was like looking down at this thing, of course, that's how I have to look at it. But why would I not want to zoom in and like be up in that bitch? Right. Uh, it's just good. Well, for those that really don't want to be on that level and would like to see uh, the whole board, there is a tilt feature. So you can tilt the table up so that you don't have to look down at it all the time. So uh, I would uh, suggest to those people to look into that. Now, uh, the way the game it works is uh, you play through two full dungeons trying to find the door and make your way uh, to the next level. On the third level, uh, you'll find the boss and a lot of very powerful enemies. Now, when I say find the door, uh, I'm, what I mean by that is the only part of the dungeons or the levels that, that you can see are the areas that you're standing in. Uh, you know, th the entire map is dark and it illuminates as characters enter into it, whether it be you and your team or the enemies. Uh, or, or I guess not even so much the enemies because there are enemies hiding throughout the darkness. So really uh, enemies can light up certain areas, but it's only when they approach the area that you're in, it'll kind of widen a little bit. Um, so you're kind of uh, proceeding with caution because you never know 
what new enemies you're going to activate uh there could be the biggest baddest monster around any corner but uh with that said roots uh there could also be treasure around any corner there could be a new card around any corner and, and that uh is one of the things that I, I really appreciated about this game it really kept the spirit of the uh the old rpg alive because your cards are very valuable and very important to the gameplay in this game um so if you're actually able to find one uh in the level itself it often turns out to be a very big deal and the difference between winning and losing ultimately yeah absolutely and there's just so much strategy to just each character like when we play derail as a rogue would is always constantly running around grabbing extra gold and, and extra stuff stealthing um you know uh they can go stealth they can grab the key go stealth and get out of there once you get out of the, the into the the keyhole you're gone everybody's done doesn't matter what's going on um i just think that it's cool there's still stuff that popping up cards i've never seen enemies i've never seen mash throwing out a a, a craziness to me telling me that two small slimes can combine to become a big slime so now i got that to worry about as well Wes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's so much man and um and what's cool is you can each character like you gotta you have to you can't just like i i play the wizard okay so and i can stun things but i can't just willy-nilly be throwing stuns around because when i've done that in the past i realize oh he's immune to stun um so it kind of it behooves you to grab the the character and and read the stats and read to what they're you know uh immune to or not immune to or how much they can do damage just like any other game like this and uh i think that's kind of cool as well because you can pick up each character um and uh and just check them out right pick them up look up close and then you actually have a reason for it as well yeah yeah that's one of the really cool things about this uh having this uh represented as a board game in front of you each character be it good guy or bad guy is a little piece on the table that you could pick up at any time and by holding it you get the stat sheet right tells you everything you need to know about the character their strengths their weaknesses things they're immune to uh so it really pays to to get involved and play with the pieces themselves yeah yeah you know who else likes to play with the pieces my <laughs> I don't even know what pieces they are, but uh, she needs to stop. It's not nice. So anyway, um, you know, as we were mentioning, you can pick up treasure all along your way to finding the door. And if you're lucky enough to find you the door to the next level, there's kind of an intermission in between the levels where you get to go shopping and it puts uh, a half a deck of cards in front of you, each with their own value. And uh, you get to choose how to spend your gold. And uh, again, you know, true to the spirit of the old school RPG card games, uh, what you choose here, the cards you pick are often the difference uh, ultimately with whether or not you win or lose. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and I will submit this right now um nerf incoming for the coin flip card <laughs> that is so overpowered bro and um i don't know that i've ever won a, a match without the rogue just smacking the crap out of that boss right and i think i've seen him miss once uh it's basically a 50 50 card if they uh get it on the on the right side it, it's an instant kill and um it's just i think it's overpowered well, I mean, that's uh, that's why it's the coin toss. I don't think that they should change that mechanic. Uh, I think that the coin flip should remain a coin flip, but they might want to limit the amount of coin flips that, that a, a person or a party can hold. So, like, maybe the party as a whole can only hold two of them among the entire group or uh, or one, you know, each person can only hold one or something like that. Uh, because it does kind of make the uh, the boss fight, uh, you know, easy. And, and, you know, I wouldn't say it's unfair because, you know, that's the way they made the game. Uh, but it certainly could be exploited. And generally when there's an exploit in a game, uh, it gets patched out pretty quickly. Well, I'll tell you what, D-Rail, the last time I played, he had three of them in his hand. Uh, he started with, I think, he... I don't know if he's, I know he bought one, he got one on a thing, and I think he might have started with one. 
Um, so when we got to the boss, it was like, you know, you got three chances, bro. And he hit it on the first one. Um, so maybe even just the percentage of uh, how, like you said, or I don't know, I guess it is 50, 50. You can't, can't change the percentage. So maybe like you said, limit that the amount or, or somehow balance it. It just, it, it, what it, what it does is it makes it, um, you get to that last boss and you're not really scared that you're going to lose. Uh, so far I've lost in the earlier stages where we're just surrounded by so much stuff and there was just no way we were doing it, dude. Um, or maybe, maybe, maybe they could make, um, the cards you get, uh, kind of subject to the difficulty level that you choose maybe you could easy normal hard at the beginning and then if you pick hard then it really limits these more higher powered cards no that's true that's true i mean there's a that there's a very good uh it's giving you options right so that sounds good right. so yeah if the game gets boring because it's too easy just go to hard level and then it won't be easy anymore that's true traveling man's got a good point 29 watching 15 likes 50 50 uh, it should be a hundred uh, under a hundred chris richardson pointing out exactly what we were just talking about he said he once had four of them at once four of the coin toss cards so uh that's exactly what we're talking about that you probably shouldn't be able to do that like there should be code in the game that prevents this from happening and i'm sure i i think you nailed it Wes. they're gonna something's gonna happen they too many people are talking about it, and now we're talking about it, so I can't imagine it, it doesn't get addressed on some level. Um, that being said, uh, it's still an uh, amazing game, and and you nailed it. It's it's the uniqueness. It's the uh, it's something that's never been done in VR, and it's done well. You know, I mean, you could do something that's never been done in VR, and it doesn't mean it's going to be good. Um, this is just, it's just done super, super amazing. And I, I alluded to it last time, but... You know, having Mash Daddy be called a loser by a ghost when he misses his shot. Those little tiny sounds and comments from the um, from your character, not only your character when you're killing stuff, but also those characters um, is, an, is an awesome touch that I didn't, you don't even really realize it until you start to really focus on what's going on and everything is saying different things and sounds and um, they did a really good job in that respect as well. Yeah, it's one of the things that really sticks out immediately upon entering this game is the level of polish that has gone into it. Everything is extremely detailed and well polished, whether it be, you know, graphically or with regards to the sound. And, and by sound, I, I mean, you know, the character voices, I mean, the directional audio and even the music. Everything is extremely polished. And, um, you know, it just goes to show what we've been saying here. Resolution Games continues to level up as a studio. And they started off, I mean, with a, a solid title like Angry Birds, Isle of Pigs. But, uh, but I mean, th they've continued to improve. And um, I don't know if anybody has leveled up during the Oculus Quest era quite as much as Resolution Games. And they, uh, they should certainly be proud of the work that they've done here. Yeah, I don't know what if I'm more excited about how good this game is or to see their next one because I mean they just keep getting better and better and better. Um, so I I would expect that the next one is going to make this one look um, mediocre, and I don't even know how you do that because this game is so good. So. Well, it's a good space for them to occupy, right? So VR is this um, emerging technology that's growing in popularity and well on its way to becoming mainstream. So you would expect that party games, uh, and specifically to be uh, a genre that, that uh, continues to build in popularity. And I think that Resolution Games has pretty much seeded themselves as, you know, the top when it comes to, to VR party games. They're the ones that do it better than anyone else. Yeah, I agree. It's something that, uh, it's kind of like we say about um, uh, 1976 and Operation Warcade, you know, that that developer found their niche. You know what I mean? This is this is Resolution Games niche and um, and they're nailing it. And, uh, and I get excited because there's so many games, so many board games, so many party games um, that we grew up playing that uh, would love to see in VR. And um, I think we might be seeing them from these this uh, developer. So, yeah, and you know, 
that kind of brings us into the other big strength of the game. So we, we already have the, the, the coolness factor, right? The novelty of everything that's going on. We talked about that. We talked about the strategic uh, turn-based gameplay, something that keeps the game fresh uh, match after match after match after match. And, and let's be honest, it needs to stay fresh. Each match takes about two hours to play so there better be some some strategy going on something to keep you engaged and between the novelty and the strategy based gameplay i feel like it does that but that brings us to the third and uh, maybe the the most uh you know favorable thing that this game gives you and that is the four player co-op gameplay you know we we often have said that uh, we like to find unique games. We want games to be unique within the VR space. What we've said even more often than that, though, is that we want co-op. Every game that comes through here, whether it be uh, decent, good, or great, we always have one thing at the top of our wish list, right? Co-op. We want co-op. And this is a co-op game. Uh, and beyond that, it's a different kind of co-op game. It's not intense. This is something that you can chill with your friends and play. And we don't have a lot of games in VR that you can just hang back at a relaxed pace and hang out with your friends. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, how about the fact that um, the audio the um, and the gr grouping and getting together is, is works really well, you know, and it, that should be a foregone conclusion. Um, but how many games do we have that come out in VR where you can't even talk to the people you're playing with? You can't group up. It's a pain in the ass. Um, it should never be an issue. Um, but for whatever reason it is, and, uh, I've not had one issue with any, either one. Um, the audio works perfect. You can talk to each other and, uh, grouping up super easy. You just make a table and give their friends your code and they're in, you know, I've never tried to do a public game, but I'm assuming it's just as easy. Yeah, I, I could, uh, you know, uh, I could say the same thing for uh, Zero Caliber Reloaded. Both of these games should be commended, not only uh, due to the fact that they offer four-player co-op, but it is easy to, to get in a match. When you get in the match, the, the voice chat works. And, uh, you know, Roots, I don't know if it's specifically something that, that has to do with these games, uh, w with regards to the voice chat working versus not working, uh, or if it's something that has to do with being on Oculus Quest versus Steam. Because in, anytime that I've had trouble, you know, matchmaking or trouble with the voice chat, it's always when I'm trying to play on Steam VR that I have these issues. Yeah, that's very possible. It could be a, a, just one more thing that Oculus nails. You know, I, I hear a lot of talk about people um about different things about oculus but uh you know a lot of what oculus does is so good is is uh you know their sdk and their um asw and like they they're tracking they've they've nailed so many different aspects of of vr that we forget we just kind of take for granted that it all works so well together um so you're very right it might may just be that as well well we know already that their their ultimate goal in end game is uh, to build this you know, social VR uh, empire, right? So, you know, if you if that's your end goal, then, you know, th this very basic level of social networking has to has to be flawless. And while there was a little bit of a bumpy ride during the uh, merger with the Facebook, uh, I feel like things are starting to kind of uh, uh, iron themselves out now. And uh, everything's just working the way that you would want it to just work. Hey, you want to know one thing though? One thing that I've noticed that isn't that is worse today than, um, and you can go back to future or future previous um, episodes, like maybe even a year ago, could be even when Alex and and Mame Fan were around. Um, but I, one of the reasons I trashed Vive or HTC was their customer service, and I always raved about Oculus, and I'm seeing so much like stuff that you were dealing with where you're like explaining to them and they're like in some other language saying i don't understand what you're saying even though you're very clear precise about what the issue is um and uh it's it's like their customer service went downhill fast 
And um, and and I'm just basing this on on the amount of stories I read on this Facebook group of people that are like, man, I and they're linking the co conversation, and I'm like, what is, like, it, it it's night and day different. I don't know. They they seem to have outsourced a lot of their customer service out of the country, and and it's gone to shit. And uh, um, I, hopefully they'll they'll rein that back in because it it's. It's one of the reasons why I chose Oculus over HTC when I first made my initial decision is I didn't want to go through horrible uh, customer service. And now if I have a problem, I'm probably going to go through horrible customer service uh, if what I'm seeing um, continues to happen. Yeah, I've, I've noticed this uh, myself and I, I don't really want to get off on a tangent here and have it you know, kind of hijack our Demio uh, review, but uh, I have notice this um and uh you know in my experience it isn't that the uh the representatives aren't willing to help or don't care about what's wrong it just seems to be like a lot of communication issues to me because uh it is outsourced now yeah absolutely um and uh dave station says the last game he played that they won was over three hours <laughs> So this wow. game, I've gone through quick games and I've gone through long games, but I've never gone through a three plus hour. And this is why uh, when they were asking if I wanted to play a game before the show, I was like, it's less than two hours, dude. I can't commit. And that is one of the things they are bringing, right? They said they're going to bring a save feature. Um, they, they said they intended it to be a one shot. They want people to hang out for a couple hours, but they're realizing that not everybody has a couple hours to invest on one game um and stuff arises man like you're in the middle of a game and you know you're a dad and emergency happens and you got to leave it's it'd be nice to be able to say okay let's all bounce out come back and uh at least they're listening and they're they're adding it so yeah um th that that's a perfect segue into our uh our wish list here for this game because there are a few things that i would like to uh to have iterated and approved of on and what you're saying there is absolutely true. A save feature would be very helpful because two to three hours is a long time for anyone to spend in VR. And especially when you're talking about playing on a mobile headset that has a hard two hour battery t limit, right? So uh, a save feature is very important here. And I get why they don't really want to, uh, to, to implement it when, when you're talking about having four specific people uh, that are part of a game and that means by saving that you have to network those same four people together uh, again it's something that might could congest you know especially if you're doing cloud saves right you you could very quickly see those servers filling up with these unfinished games that people never return to um but with that they're, they're with that said there, there are easy solutions to that you can make it a timed thing so come back to the game within a week and you, you can pick it up um but uh, yeah I, I think that the the length of the gameplay is, is uh, kind of a concern here uh not only uh due to the fact that there's no saves but what if three people uh are fully down to hang out for two hours but one isn't or four people are down to hang out but there's a fifth guy that, uh, that that wants to hang out too, but doesn't have the two hours. Mm. Uh, I think it would be very helpful because so much of this game and so much of the appeal of the game is hanging out with your friends. I think it would be great if there were a spectator mode. So someone could join. They don't even have to have an avatar in game. Just let them have a presence in the room so that they can zoom in and watch and talk to their friends. So if I want to come in, let's say you guys you and MASH and Radio Rut and Spry Guy are all playing a game, and I want to come out and come in and hang out for 30 minutes, I can come into the room and watch you guys play and talk to you and kind of help, you know, strategize or whatever, and then uh, take off and go to work or whatever it is I have to do. I think a spectator mode uh, allowing a, an additional two, maybe three people to join the room, uh, if enabled, of course, by the host, um, I think it would be a big plus for this game and, and make it a lot more appealing uh, for people who don't always have two hours to play. Now, let me ask you this. Would you have to own the game to spectate? Okay. Yes. Um, yes. You would yeah, have to. Own that, the game. Would, that would create all sorts of issues, right? 
Um, mm -hmm. but uh, but yeah, I think that's an excellent idea for sure. And um, another excellent idea Dave Station said, which I know I've heard you say before. Actually, I've heard a couple of people say it. Um, they'd like a stick movement uh, to some to degree without. Uh, they don't like the sports bar VR. As a matter of fact, that's the one thing that you said you hated about sports bar VR is one smack right back in the in, in the middle of this game. Um, to have to grab it and pull it and turn it, it you get used to it. You start to do it, and, but it would be nice to be able to just turn your stick and have you turn um, and not have to, you know, move the table. Maybe you grab the table to turn the table, but you can turn yourself. I don't know. I somehow incorporate the sticks, and that would be nice. Yeah, uh, this was the thing that ruined Sports Bar for me, which is unfortunate because uh, in my experience, it's the only good game of billiards in VR. Uh, but the 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 movement in sports bar is so terrible it keeps me out of the game. Now, with that said, I didn't it didn't turn me off quite as much in Demio. Um, the movement I don't mind so much. The grab and pull movement. What really bothers me is the the turning. Mm. There needs to be stick turning in this game. This thing where you bring your your fists over one <laughs> another to turn. It's not intuitive and it's overly sensitive. So when you finally do get it to move you, you always overshoot it and you have to turn back and, until you get it somewhere close to where you wanted it to be. And then you just pretty much deal with it because you don't want to keep messing with it. Uh, there should be a sensitivity control on turning and there should be stick turning and you should have the option to enable stick turning. There's no good reason not to the sticks really aren't used for anything anyway. So why not give people the ability to turn naturally the way that they're used to? Uh, it just seems, um, it seems to defy logic to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I agree. 100% Trey VR says he loves the quest two games, but uh, they're throwaway one, maybe two times and he's good. Um, as far as I'm assuming, I don't know if that's every game. I mean, that's what I've been screaming about for months or almost a year about gameplay loop and that draw something to pull you back in. I do feel like the games are getting better in that respect. Um, this one being one of them, Swarm, uh, Crashland. Uh, there's quite a few examples now that I say do do a very good job of, of getting you back in there. Um, but uh, a lot of the games that are shallow, absolutely. I could go in there and I can look at my hands and I can go across a, a, a rope or a ladder or something, and then I'm just about out of there. Uh, so I, I, I see both sides of it, Trey, but I completely understand exactly where you're coming from. Well, th there's more and more games now that I, I feel defy this. Like, I think this is one of them. You know, we talk about Swarm and Crashland all the time. Mm. I would say that that new Zombieland game, there, there's lots of... Uh, uh, games now that hold your attention quest games aren't what they used to be and quest 2 isn't what quest 1 was and i think now that they're doing exclusives on quest 2 you're going to see it continue to uh, separate itself in terms of quality and replayability in the games yeah i just read today resident evil 4 is 16 hours i believe they said so i mean that'll be 16 hours of of goodness um and that was one of the things that blew me away too is somebody in the comments was was saying that uh they weren't impressed with the graphics and i i immediately commented back what the uh the alpha footage that they showed yeah. like uh, how 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 are you supposed to this is alpha footage bro from probably six months ago and i i guarantee by fall it's going to look way better and then you get in the headset I just sometimes I'm blown away by people's Well, comments. that's the thing, right? Uh, that's the thing, right? You can't tell what a game's going to look like in, until you put the headset on. I thought that Zombieland game looked like garbage until I put the headset on, and it's awesome. One of the better-looking games I've seen in Quest. So you can't tell until you put the thing on your face. Yeah, absolutely. And that's for almost every single game. Um, and that's why I, I, I still think Scion needs to put it on his face and come, come into the fold, Scion. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dave, Station VR, they also need to make walls semi-transparent when they are blocking the view of your characters. It takes forever to get an un unobscure view sometimes. Yeah, it does kind of take forever, but again, I think that's more of a condemnation on the controls than anything. Uh, you should be able to easily maneuver yourself into a spot where you can see. Uh, so I, I don't know so much of whether or not they need to make the walls transparent. Of course, I you know, uh many games do that and uh obviously uh that would be an easy solution to the problem but uh, again it's just kind of a band-aid to the larger problem which is the movement in the game yeah 
absolutely um and uh ray delator says he's he needs a battery wes and that's exactly you do need a battery everybody that has a quest too or you need to have a, a way to plug it in um with a, a link cable or um, a, an off link cable or something because there's going to be times you're going to want to play um you're just going to want to play for more than two three hours I, I go into this game west i plug it i plug it in one i'm not spinning around i don't need to be wireless for this game and two, I don't want to run out of battery. I don't want to hear, you know, uh, be stressed out. I mean, you can actually, there's a couple of things you can do. You can turn off the the basement. Um, so it's just a black screen. I would imagine that would give you a little bit more juice for a little bit longer. Um, but uh, yeah, you definitely need more battery power as well. And uh, Trey VR, I agree. We are awesome. But <laughs> I appreciate you um, saying we're awesome. So uh, you're awesome. All right, and uh, that brings me to my other big wish list item uh, with this game, and that is simply more content. You know, uh, for, for all its uh, awesome things that it does, uh, you, you're basically doing the same thing every time. Now, again, uh, you know, the gameplay is always going to be there, right? The, the strategy-based gameplay, every game's different. Uh, that's always going to be there. The the coolness of hanging out with your friends is always going to be there, right? You know, this is a nice, chill experience that you can go hang out with friends. You don't have to worry about, you know, being in the middle of a war zone and, and having this high tension thing going on where nobody can really enjoy one another's company. Uh, none of that here. So the gameplay is there. The replayability is there the uh the social aspects are there but the novelty the novelty is going to start wearing off here and you're going to get tired of seeing these same characters these same cards and these same dungeons that's why i was very excited to see them announce right off the top before the game even launched that the uh the rat king dlc is coming soon coming this summer uh, i i feel like uh, they need to be a DLC factory for this thing. Mm -hmm. what, what they're doing for the next 12 months uh, at Resolution Games should be solely working on DLC packs for this thing. And hopefully they're like decks of cards that you buy, right? You're not going to have to pay an arm and a leg, you know, six, seven, eight bucks buys you a new deck and uh, puts a fresh coat of paint on this otherwise very fun and engaging game how about a new set of characters too man wouldn't that be cool like i i would think it would be awesome if you could choose between eight characters or 12 characters um and each one of them like i've seen some people uh list some things like the bard or or all the different types of characters and the, each one of them has a different unique ability of what they can do um or add to the game uh which i know uh i've seen people you know couple people do you know you you might have three wizards or i mean you could change it up in that respect but other than that it, it uh it would be samey a little bit samey as far as the characters go well that's cool though i mean it works just like uh like the the tabletop counterpart would work right the real life tabletop counterpart they don't even need to call them dlcs they can just call them expansion packs because that's basically what it is you're making your deck bigger you know who loves it when you make your deck bigger roots mm -hmm. My mom. she does man that's what i heard chris richardson says rat king is going to be free it should be it should be chris and that's great that it is uh because this is a 30 dollar game right and i and, and i guess we should go right up right ahead and get into it now uh, I do recommend it at $30, especially if you're buying it on the Oculus Store because it is confirmed a cross-buy title. Um, but yeah, if you're into this sort of game, it's worth the $30. But $30 is a bit pricey. I can recognize that. So now that they're the, confirming that the Rat King DLC or expansion pack is going to be free, it certainly makes that $30 value proposition a lot more palatable. Yeah, absolutely. This says he's he still has yet to win a game he hasn't played since right after launch uh yet to win a game i've only lost one game bro i feel i feel i feel dirty <laughs> every game i've played i've won except for one and we'd got our butt slammed in the first i mean it was we didn't even make it out of that first dungeon we just got we went in and there was so much in there 
that uh, it was out of control. And um, it was very disheartening, actually. It was the quickest game I've ever had. I think it was like 10 minutes, uh, which is crazy. <laughs> Hack the game cat and uh, hack the game cat is in the chat. He says, uh, "Isn't Charlie the king of the rats?" I thought Theo Vaughn was the rat king, and those of you who are fans of his know exactly what I'm talking about. I have no idea. <laughs> Ray Delator says, "For some reason, the mom jokes never get old. It's because they're good, man. They're funny. <laughs> yeah, well, anybody can tell shit jokes, but uh, I'm witty, bro. <laughs> yeah, right." Anyway, um, I think that pretty much sums it up here. I think we've said all we need to say on this game. Uh, extremely unique. A good, chill way to hang out with your friends. Probably not for everybody. I mean, not everybody's in the multiplayer. Not everybody uh, plays two-hour-long games. Uh, but if you're like me, I'm not really a multiplayer guy. Uh, a game like this is very appealing to me because... Uh, it is so chill and it is so strategic. I feel like it plays to my strengths, this game. And um, even when I was learning, uh, the more experienced players were kind of counting me out in it. But that's only because they didn't see what cards I was holding, baby. I knew the whole time how that was going to go. <laughs> so uh, I will admit uh, I was a little nervous myself because everybody was like, oh, my God, you should have done this. And I was like, ooh. And Wes is like, well, how about this, bitch? And then the boss died and we won. And I was like, yeah, that's how Wes rolls, bro. Yeah, I kept my, my cards close to my chest intentionally uh, just so I could uh, bust it out there at the end dramatically. And uh, it worked out. Absolutely. And and Radio Runt is throwing down the gauntlet and, and, uh, and just teasing Roots and saying he's going in there right now. As I was just saying, man, I want to play this now after the show, and it's so late, bro. <laughs> well, not, not so fast, bro. We've got things to talk about. Anyway, um, again, the final word on this, uh, $30 on uh, Steam, on Oculus, cross by on Oculus. Highly recommend it, uh, especially now that it's getting a free expansion pack. So uh, check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Diz the Game Cat with the $5 donation. That was a good one, LOL. Make my deck bigger. <laughs> <laughs> toot, toot. Uh, tip train rolls on, Roots. Who doesn't want a bigger deck? You know what I mean? These days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying, bro. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what are you talking wait, about? Wait, oh, man? wait. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get to uh, the thing. The thing, Roots, the thing that I've been looking forward to talking about literally all day and all week long, um, a few days ago, Upload kind of dropped a bomb on everyone, or at least that's how it was taken. And, you know, uh, I was kind of surprised at how shocked people were at these specs that Upload leaked. Like, um, for those that, that didn't catch it, uh, Upload uh, apparently... Um, VR developers are now starting to get development kits for the next generation of PlayStation VR. And as is always the case, uh, leaks are starting to happen and upload obviously being in with some of these studios. Um, they were able to, uh, you know, gather some information on the specs of the next gen PSVR. And then of course they know enough people that they were able to confirm some of it. And, you know, in, in true uh, journalistic fashion, they went straight to the public with it and uh, put it all out there as an exclusive, right? Um, but, you know, I'm not so sure how exclusive it was and we'll talk about that in uh, just a moment. But uh, people genuinely happy to hear that this thing's not gonna be a potato roots. It's going to uh, feature, uh, and this is this is all what the the upload uh, leaks said. It's going to have a 4K screen split between two eyes. So basically, two 2K per eye graphics. It's going to have, um, it's going to have eye tracking in it, and it's going to have uh, HMD mounted haptics. So it's going to be a next gen headset. And people were just floored. They couldn't believe it, Roots. Well, they were just shocked, right? They didn't think Sony was going to come out swinging, even though that's what we've been saying for the last year. Is like Sony's not going anywhere. They're, you know, 
Uh, and I, I blame Sony to some extent because they've um, they've been so quiet and they've they've almost played games. You know, they're like Sony does. They like to bring out stuff. And bam, you know. Um, so they kept a lot of things to their chest, and people took that as a, that they they weren't even going to do PlayStation VR two. I saw some other podcasts literally saying that um, about a year ago, and uh, eh, no one will probably bring it up, but <laughs> I'm bringing it up now. Um, and you know who you are, um, but uh, it's just crazy, um, Wes. Uh, dude, he, he was going off on uh, Twitter all day yesterday too. He's not impressed apparently, but oh. uh, that's a different story for a different day. <laughs> Maybe we'll get into that as we uh, go through this. Anyway, um, shout out to to uh, Brian Paul by the way because he pretty much called it. You know, he, they did a video. I think it might have been that very same day that upload leaked this stuff that uh, he felt like the, all of these new Sony uh, teaser ads were going to be leading up to something. And he speculated that we might be hearing something very soon about PlayStation VR. And then there it was not even a day later, uh, we get all this stuff leaked to us. So uh, good job on him um, with the uh, with the prediction there. Um, but anyway, uh, what I'm driving at here is we weren't all that shocked. Uh, I mean, some of the things that that upload said were a little surprising, but all in all, this is what we've been expecting. Now, why would we expect stuff like this? Well, I, I kind of put it together here, and uh, we, we're going to talk about the play the the next version of PlayStation VR, what we know about it, how we found out about it and what we think about it. And we're going to go start to finish on everything that we know about PlayStation 5 VR. So what do we know? Well, I mean, right off the top, uh, the one thing that we know and has been confirmed or what you're looking at on, on the screen right there, the controllers. A couple of months ago, Sony confirmed that their next-gen VR system is on the way, and this announcement was accompanied by a full reveal of their next-gen VR controllers. As you can see, these controllers are very similar to Oculus Touch controllers, featuring a similar button layout with capacitive touch buttons. What will allow these controllers to stand out, however, is the HD haptics feature, which are also present in the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. These haptics are one of a few new features that Sony is using to realize a true generational leap in the immersiveness of their games so uh roots we we've talked on and off uh about these controllers and how happy that we are that you know console based vr is finally going to have a legitimate controller not only uh because it has thumbsticks not only because it's going to be tracked from the headset and there's going to be true room scale tracking now uh but these haptics that are at play in the dual sense or something that's really worth being truly excited over. Yeah, yeah. I, these these controllers are. Um, I'm excited, man. And I don't even, you know, I'm almost excited enough about what Mepper just said about Walmart. There's a rumor that they might be having uh, some physical copies in the WalMarts in the next couple of days. Uh, so keep your eye out, whether that's true or not. Uh, that might be the best chance you have. You know, Wes was just discussing before we went on that. You know, there's a lot of people that are going to wait to get this um, PlayStation VR 2 or the PlayStation 5, and they won't be able to get it, you know. Um, and so it might be behoove people to get it now if you can, uh, regardless of how far out the PlayStation VR 2 is. Uh, so, Yeah, I think a lot of these naysayers out there, uh, a lot of these people that are still kind of negative on the prospect of PlayStation uh, VR going forward, uh they're all going to buy it or they're all going to want to buy it the the games it's always the games with sony the games are what's going to sell the hardware and if they wait until these games are revealed to buy a lot of people aren't going to be able to get it they're going to have to wait because uh things are in such short supply and this doesn't appear to be changing uh, at all in the very near future yeah so definitely pick it up now if you can i'm i'm jealous i don't have money to pick up a, a playstation 5 right now so i don't see myself getting one for a while but uh uh who knows man santa's coming you know 
few months. And yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> uh, Mepper says the rumor comes from the gaming Intel website. I, I will say this, that um, someone uh, who claims to know someone at, at Walmart uh, electronics uh, told me just a few days ago that they are getting physical ones in, uh, but they're only coming like two, you know, two of them they might get like once in a blue moon and they're gone as soon as they get them. So they never really make it to the shelf basically. Yeah. It's too many employees that call their friends or family or come get it quick, you know? Right. So if you have a chance and an opportunity to buy a PlayStation five, uh, you absolutely should do it. You should jump on it. And then if you decide later it's something you don't want, which you're not going to decide that, I mean, this is a high ticket item. You, you, you can get rid of it easily. Yeah. Uh, tech wants to know if the controllers will have 15 hours of game pay, play like the new HTC Vive controllers. I don't know. I don't know. Or the HTC Vive. I don't know exactly if you meant the controllers or the, the Vive in general, but uh, I bet they last a lot. I bet these controllers are are everything that we wanted out of the index controllers, um, except for the yeah, joysticks I, I don't, won't break. Yeah, I can't speak on the PlayStation uh, VR, VR controllers specifically. Uh, but I can say that there's no issue with uh, battery life on the dual sense. And um, I mean, I've had all night long sessions of Returnal lately with oh this thing, God. haptics, haptics going off the whole time. Like it never stops. The haptics are constant in this. And, uh, and I never have had issues with, uh, you know, battery life at all. Well, that's crazy. I might as well even switch it to this, this trailer um you know to hear that Wes had an all-night session with a flat game has got to tell you how amazing this uh system is and how good it is how the good the game is right yeah i played it i played it all night last night dude <laughs> i did this up all night playing it i'll tell you what man there's not many things that i'm jealous of as far as like gaming wise playstation um 5 but uh i've been looking into returnal and um and trying to figure out how i could play it on the pc and this is not happening uh, so I'm yeah. just going to have to live vicariously through you and, and derail and a couple other people that have been enjoying. I think it was derail. that has been enjoying the hell out of this game. Yeah, I heard a rumor that they're working on some sort of VR mode for this too, for the uh, next gen Sony Ooh. VR. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, I would think that that would, I don't think that anything's off the, off the table. You know what I mean? I, I, Sony's going to bring it. So uh, it's exciting. Yeah, Sony is going to bring it. Let's uh, let, let's continue our talk here. Uh, what do we know outside of the controllers? Well, we also know that the HMD will be tethered to the PS5 using a single USB Type-C cable. Uh, Jim Ryan has stated that this is necessary to produce the level of high-quality immersive experiences that is synonymous with PlayStation 5. More on the cable in a little while so i know you guys are chomping at the bit to get into this whole debate uh about cable versus wireless and we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh in a bit but roots just quickly uh if jim ryan says that it's not possible to bring the kind of games that they want to make wirelessly then i say then put a wire on it right yeah yeah uh, that definitely uh would be the common sense move for me for sure uh does the game cat says what are the chances someone figures out a way to use psvr2 on pc it is usb-c uh throwing a fiver at us to get that out there we appreciate that what are the chances wes what do you think it it depends on what yeah what application that you're referring to specifically now um what are the chances that someone is able to use this headset to play PC VR games. I think the chances of that are pretty good. It is an inside out tracked uh, headset. It is uh, connectable through USB-C. So I, I think that the, uh, the amount of coding and, and software work that it'll have to be done to get this to run on Steam VR is minimal. People use the first PlayStation VR headset to play Steam VR. So I think that, uh, that you know within a year we'll probably see the same thing with the uh, successor uh now if you're asking me uh you know if people are going to be able to use a pc to play the sony games on the playstation vr headset now that's a different 
uh, a different um, question entirely. Of course, you know, eventually that'll happen. Uh, you know, the people are successfully able to emulate consoles eventually, but generally that comes after the lifespan of the uh, console has passed. Uh, for example, uh, you can you can emulate PlayStation 3 games pretty well on your PC right now if you know what you're doing, but you still can't really emulate PS4. Not well. I mean, it can be done, but not well. Uh, I would say within the next three to four years, uh, you'll be able to play PS4 games on your PC through an emulator. Uh, so I think that um, while one day, sure, you'll be able to boot up you know, Astrobot 2 on your PC and play it on your uh, PS5 VR headset, uh, I think that day is so far off into the future that it's really irrelevant to the uh, conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Um, Onakazi says, uh, but it also depends if they are using the cord like the Oculus Link with streaming and decompression on board headset or if they're using USB 3 alt DP mode for video. Well, they're going to have hdr i don't think the thing is 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 what oculus is doing is like a an afterthought it's like okay we want the we want the quest we want it wireless but we're going to throw the bone to the uh the pc vr players and this is how we're doing it through this cable however sony is doing it um just from what they're saying is gonna is gonna uh include fidelity they they want that triple a experience um to blow you away they're they, you know, and that's why when, you know, I'm, people say you can use Asgard's Wrath, you can play wirelessly through Link, which you can, Air Link, um, but there's still compression and there's still artifacts that you, maybe you oversee it, maybe you uh, super sample through it, whatever. Um, Sony, I don't believe, plays that game. They're, they're, they want the top notch experience um, and that only comes with the cable, uh, I think, anyway. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what Jim Ryan's saying. And again, I tend to take his word for it. Um, I want to cause he clarifying that uh, he thinks that he was just asking about using it as a PCVR Steam headset. Uh, yeah, I, I assume that's what he meant as well. And yes, I do think that that is coming. Uh, but with that said, uh, obviously, the, the features, the extra features that are built into this headset really aren't things that uh, Steam advantage, Steam VR is going to be able to take advantage of. Uh, so I don't think people are going to buy these to use as a PC VR headset. I think that there's going to be much more viable options for people who just want to play PC. But for people who have a PlayStation, who have a PlayStation 5 VR, who maybe don't have a PC VR headset, but want to play PC VR, I think that this eventually will be a viable option for them to uh to play pc games without having to go and buy an additional headset yeah yeah i mean there's that's what's always good is uh versatility right yeah so. um oh dark angel joining us in chat says what's up gamers what's up dark thanks for uh thanks for joining us yeah absolutely all right uh so uh we know about the controllers we know that the uh headset's going to be cabled uh, beyond this, all that has been confirmed regarding the system is that it will not launch this year. Although, again, dev kits are now being sent to some of the more prominent VR studios. Okay, so that's what we know. Now, what was leaked? This past week, Upload VR shared a few specs that were leaked to them via multiple sources that are believed to have received one of these early development kits. First of all, HMD haptics. Among the specs revealed by Upload, there was really only one that was truly surprising. The next generation of PSVR will have the ability to provide haptic feedback from the headset itself. Having this kind of next level haptics in the head as well as the hands could potentially provide a level of immersiveness the likes of which has never been seen before. Uh, having played Astro's Playroom and more recently Returnal, I felt firsthand what it's like to have these haptics that actually impact the gameplay. We can expect this effect to be magnified exponentially when paired with a VR headset. And uh, beyond, obviously, this obvious application of haptics, Patton's 
have also been filed and studies conducted that show that headset mounted haptics can help to mitigate the effects of ER sickness. So there's multiple reasons for them including this. Uh, but let's start at the top here, Roots. Uh, immersiveness. Uh, you know, I, I uh, when I first got my PlayStation 5 and I, I explained to you the, um, the what it felt like to play Astro's Playroom and how amazing it was to feel rain hitting the controller in the controller and how realistic it felt. Uh, it was amazing to me, the experience. Now, you know, visualize that, but now you have it in a motion controller and a headset. So uh, imagine that you step outside of your in-game apartment onto the street and it's raining and uh, you feel the rain uh, hitting you in the face and in the head through the haptics in your headset. Very realistic you know, rain smacking you type of feeling. Then you get out your in-game umbrella, put it over your head, and now all of a sudden you don't feel it here anymore, but you feel it in your hand, right? Because now you're holding the umbrella. It's this type of, uh, of interaction at the very most basic level that is going to add a, a depth to the VR experience that we've never seen before. Yeah. I agree. And uh, that's what I want to feel, man. I, how crazy is that going to be to be able to feel stuff on your head? I mean, we're used to haptics in our hand, not next level haptics, but we're used to it to some extent, but there's no haptics in your head, bro. This is going to be a, a new thing that's, um, that I think it's going to be, it's going to take that immersion level to the next level. Absolutely. Especially if you're getting stabbed in the face, man. Imagine playing a game like, um, uh, or stabbed in the head, or who knows, man. I don't get a headshot from a, a bullet from a, a gun, or I mean, that's just gonna be crazy. Yeah, and that's the other thing here. I mean, what what I just described to you is a very basic use of haptics. The way haptics have always been used in games to 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 provide an extra layer of depth and immersive immersion. Now, uh, what people, what most people aren't thinking of, and aren't really going to fully understand until they get it in their hands is how PlayStation 5 has kicked up the use of haptics now that they've implemented this HD haptic system. And I explained a little bit about it the other day. Uh, the haptics are part of the gameplay now. So you can, you can discern things about your environment through the haptics. You can tell what, what kind of place that you're standing in, what kind of environmental hazards are nearby based on how they feel. And uh, you know, the, the reload mechanics in Returnal are, are connected to the haptics. You can tell when your alternate fire weapon has cooled off based on how the controller feels. Uh, you can tell when enemies are nearby based on how the controller feels. Now, having this extended from the controllers into your face inside a next-gen VR headset, uh, I mean, we're talking about stuff that's never been done before here roots and it's very very exciting oh absolutely and uh i want it now wes and we're we're a ways away from it <laughs> i'm definitely a ways away from it I, i'm probably going to be i don't want to put this out there but i'll probably be one of those people wishing that i'd gotten it when i had a chance to get it uh but um man i want it now yeah for sure um so yeah, uh, and again, um, this as we're going to talk about with a lot of these features here today, uh, a lot of these have more than one application, and these haptics are uh, are an example of that because, like I just mentioned, uh, there have been patents filed, there have been studies done that show that having this type of haptics in the headset uh, can severely reduce VR sickness, which is uh, kind of a big deal for Sony because, you know, they, they've also, they, they've always been um, kind of uh, on overkill when it comes to comfort settings. They always make sure that, uh, that the most, um, the most, uh, you know, they always make sure that the comfort settings are the default settings in their games, right? So the, the most uh, dulled down experience that you could possibly have in VR 
is the one that set the default and then you have to go into the settings and turn all of this stuff off so th they've always been you know huge on making sure that people don't get sick in their uh hardware and uh if this is true what they're saying here about this this could potentially be a game changer not only for console vr but vr as a whole yeah yeah because if it really does work as well as they're thinking it's going to i think uh it'll be adopted big time um if anything just because it's going to make the games that much more um, more immersive but uh you know I, I take for granted um not getting sick from vr uh a lot of people do and uh, if they can eliminate that uh that's one of the biggest things i've heard from people just talking to them in passing is oh, i tried that and it, I, I got sick and they just never go back um and think about well, what they're the missing thing. right that's the thing it's one of the biggest barriers to entry because people don't understand that uh that this is something that you can overcome they just get in there and the first time if they get sick they assume that it's just not for them uh but what the, they don't understand that with experience, uh, you gain a knowledge of, of what to play and how to play it. And, and you, you quickly learn that, um, you know, people that had a bad first experience are basically were just playing the wrong game for too long. Right. Or they got put into the wrong game by the, a person that shouldn't have, you know, <laughs> hey, check out this roller coaster. And, uh, you know, the person's looking around like this, and uh, next thing they know, you're they're getting sick, right? So, Dark Angel uh, testified, says, speaking of, I'm pretty sure I just got one of my best friends a little motion sick, just hanging in rec room. He, he mm -hmm. just got a Quest 2 yesterday. Uh, yeah, the uh, frame rate tends to dip in, in rec room uh, a little bit. So, uh, you know, I, I've known some other people that have tried to start in rec room and ended up getting sick. So your friend's probably going to be pretty averse to getting back in. Uh, you just have to be persistent uh, with, you know, making sure they choose the right game and making sure that they limit themselves. When you start to feel a little weird is when you take it off. You don't wait to get sick because after you get full blown sick, uh, it's very hard to get back into the headset. See, that's why, that's one of the reasons, and I didn't really mention this last show, but that's why I like to see the meters until I verify everything's running good. Um, because a lot of times you don't know that it's not running good until you start to feel weird. And I don't want to have to feel weird and then have to take the headset off. I can count on one hand the amount of times that I've had to take my headset off um, because I felt weird. Uh, because I'm constantly making sure the frames are where they're supposed to be. When they start dipping all over the place, you may not notice it, and then all of a sudden you just start to feel weird, right? I don't like it. Um, I don't like to be limited in my experience uh, because of of weird frame rates. And, and like you said, uh, you're exactly right. Certain games will dip, and you don't even notice it. And uh, um, if it happens long enough, um, you start to not feel the best. Anyway, if this haptics uh, helps to mitigate that for first-time users, uh, then it's a big deal because a, a lot of the people that they're shooting for are, are going to be first-time users, right? They're, they're, they're trying to bring more of their console uh, user base over into VR. So uh, it's important for them to be able to provide a, a comfortable yet mind-blowing experience to these people. Yeah. So uh, that, that could potentially be a big deal. Absolutely. Uh, beyond the haptics, uh, as exciting as the other features are, they aren't exactly surprising to anyone who has been watching the situation closely. All right. So so listen up, people. This is, uh, this is pretty significant here. In early 2019, Sony Interactive Entertainment's Vice President of R&D, Dominic Mallinson, detailed three must-have evolutionary improvements for future VR headsets. So early 2019, the head of Sony R&D talked about the next iteration of VR, okay? Talked about three must-have evolutionary improvements for the next product. First of all, display resolution. The first of Mallinson's must-have evolutionary improvements was a much higher 
display resolution. At the time, he stated that he expects resolution to, quote, roughly double in the next set of VR products. The reported resolution of PlayStation 5 VR from the upload leaks is said to be 2000 by 2040 per eye, which is roughly double the resolution of the OG PSVR headset. Incidentally, this will put the new Sony headset just slightly below the resolution of the HP Reverb G2, ensuring that it will remain a viable headset in the years ahead. Um, so again, people were kind of uh, uh, drooling all over themselves at the idea, well, most people anyway, at the idea of a 4K display. Well, th this is not 4K VR, right? This is 4K split amongst two eyes. It's 2K per eye. It's basically an, HP, an HP Reverb G2 in that sense. Now, with that said, uh, we were talking about the, the HTC Vive headsets a couple of days ago. And what I said then very much applies here. Um, 2K per eye is enough, man. We, we don't need much more resolution. I can't hardly see the pixels now. So, you know, when somebody like Anthony gets out there and complains about how this, this headset isn't next gen because, uh, you know, it, it's supposed to be good for the next four to five years and it's only using 2K per eye, uh, trust me, there's not going to be that big of a discernible difference between 2K per eye and 4K per eye. We're starting to hit the point now uh, of diminishing return. And uh, I think, you know, uh, uh, we've seen what Sony was able to do with uh, a low spec headset. I think with this 2K per eye headset, this is gonna be a very viable headset throughout the life of the PlayStation 5. But 4K is better than 2K. <laughs> right it, it just said i think it, it's it's what we th we think you know what i mean we're we're watching 4k now on a tv and we think we need it in vr and i i, I think people you know they forget like the, the thing still needs to push the the graphics on it you know what i mean like if you kick double it to 4k man like what are you gonna have to run to to run that beast like are we still talking about a playstation 5 or are we talking about a playstation 7 or 8 you know, at some point, and, I, and I've said this about the PC VR headsets in the past as well, like all of these gadgets, and they all sound great, but they all take more resources to run, and we can't get the 3080s, um, you know, and so even in the PlayStation 5, there's a finite amount of power that they're, and, and resources that they can use, and, uh, and so I don't think 4K is even really feasible, uh, you know what I mean? That just sounds so crazy to think about something think about what a double your reverb would take what computer would have to run it i think your 3080 might struggle you know what i mean uh, it, it just it, that's crazy to me yeah on, on a related note um it appears that uh that the the 3080 or the the 3000 series and the g2 the problems that they were having playing together are a thing of the past my thing works perfectly now all of a sudden even the microphone issues are gone like everything just works now to the point that uh, i played saints and sinners yesterday at 100 percent resolution streaming it recording it both i tried it both ways i recorded and i streamed and uh not a hitch it just how did, perfect how did it look ran perfectly beautiful beautiful yeah. as uh as uh, fx in the chat here says agreed i can't see the pixels in the in the uh and the, he says the Q2, so I, maybe he's talking about the Quest 2. Yeah. Um, but that just further illustrates my point here. Um, what, so if you can't see the pixels now, what what's having double the, you know, 4K per eye going to do? Make you not see them even more? I mean, you know what I mean? Resolution is not the problem. And uh, I think 2K per eye is amazing. And I'm glad that... Uh, that that's what we're getting here with this uh, because again like you said uh first of all the ps5 needs to be able to run it and second of all we as consumers need to be able to afford it uh so we need to remember that we're not talking about uh 2025 <laughs> state-of-the-art pc vr headset here we're talking about playstation vr and i think 2k per eye is a perfect sweet spot for them to land on absolutely and onakazi's 
point is perfect as ps5 has trouble keeping 4k at 60 hertz um or at least maybe not trouble but that's where it's at and imagine putting that in your headset uh it's not gonna happen dude uh so uh, i i understand where he's coming from we always want more you know who doesn't want more but uh i also want it to run and i want it to run at 90 or 120 frames per second smoothly and that's what sony does sony doesn't they're not going to come in and all those things we just talked about rec room and frames dropping and stuff doesn't exist on in their in their headset right um it's going to run smooth and that's what we want right and again uh totally expected here Again, uh, Dominic Mallinson, uh, two years ago, over two years ago, said that the next product would be roughly double the resolution. And here we are uh, two years later, and it's roughly double the resolution. Now, one, part, one important piece of info that is yet to be revealed is the type of display technology that Sony plans to use. Like they didn't say if this is going to be an LCD or what. We don't know what kind of screen it is. And this is a huge deal that can make a significant difference in the user experience. For example, anyone who has played Blood and Truth or Hitman 3 on PlayStation 5 using the original PlayStation VR will tell you how amazingly crisp and clear that these games look inside the headset. Now, Consider the fact that this headset is nearly five years old and has a display resolution, listen to this, has a display resolution of 960 by 1080 per eye. 960 by 1080 per eye. Now, how is this possible? Well, the PlayStation VR is the only consumer headset to use a single 120 hertz RGB OLED display. And being a console-based company, Sony is uniquely qualified to get the most out of their hardware. So needless to say, the type of display technology being used is going to be a very potentially big deal. So uh, Roots, we don't know if we're going to get an LCD like every other modern headset seems to be moving to now. It's very possible that they could go RGB OLED again and uh, we're talking about a whole new level of quality uh, when it comes to visuals, if that's what they decide to do. Yeah, if they can do it and they can make it uh, feasible financially, I don't see why they don't. Like everything else they're doing is next level, right? Why would you not? Uh, you know, Ray Delator says he prays for an OLED. Everybody, you know what I mean? That's the one thing that we're all hoping. And, uh, and I'm sure Sony knows it. So if they can make it happen, they're going to do it. Um, whether that happens or not, I mean, you know, there is the, the case to be made that every single other headset out there since it's came out has been LCD. Um, so it could be that that's just the way of the future. But I, I, I believe Sony, um, if they can do it, they're going to do it. Now, I pray for an RGB OLED like last time. Right. Now, if it's going to be a pentile OLED, I'd rather have an LCD because that screen door effect is it's it's uh, very noticeable on the pentile uh, displays. But RGB OLED, absolutely, yeah. and I think it's very possible. Yeah. Uh, and, and and the reason why, not only because they did it before, um, because uh, well, let's think about this: Why is Ray Delator praying for OLED? It's not because of uh, clarity. You know, the LCDs are quite clear. It's because of contrast, right? He wants a high contrast screen. So that brings us to the second must-have feature listed by Dominic Mallinson. This was high dynamic range or HDR capable displays. HDR is the ability of a display to produce ranges of brightness that far exceed standard displays, thereby allowing the display to more realistically portray ultra high contrast scenes like those with bright sunlight, fire, explosions, and more. Mallinson says he expects HDR to be adopted in the near future. And while this feature was not specifically mentioned in the upload leaks, I certainly would expect it to be included based on these comments, as well as the precedent set by PlayStation VR's RGB OLED display. So the second major thing that the uh, president of R&D um, said is a must-have feature is HDR. And what that means, Roots, is 
that it's very likely going to be an OLED. And if it's not, it's going to be a higher quality LCD than we've ever seen in any other headset. Yeah, I think it's going to be amazing. GT just dropped in, says uh, he's listening in the shower. And I, I, I can't believe it. We're in the shower with GT. And it made me think, you know, who else likes to be in the shower with GT? <laughs> My mom! Yeah, she does. It's, it's dangerous, man. It's dangerous being <laughs> in the shower listening to this stuff. Uh, because if you get excited like I do, this stuff might start to affect you on a physical level. <laughs> well, that would be interesting for sure and best left to uh, our imagination. And I'll just say this. If you wash it more than twice, that ain't washing it. <laughs> uh, Gamertag asks us to please wash his back. We got your back, bro. Yeah, we always got your back, GT. Uh, morning, top, top of the morning to you. Thanks for uh, stopping by, brother. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we have roughly double the display resolution, just like Mr. Mallinson said. And uh, he also said we would be getting HDR. Uh, and I fully expect that to be the case, even though it has yet to be confirmed. Uh, so what would be the third uh, must-have feature, according to uh, Mr. Mallinson? Well, Mallinson also said that he expects the field of view to increase. Most VR headsets today have a field of view of around 100 degrees, he said, but he expects the next, I'm sorry, he expects the next set of products to be roughly 120 degrees in terms of field of view. This too has yet to be confirmed, but it is in line with the newly revealed HTC products. So I would expect to see a similar modest expansion of field of view on the next gen Sony device. So uh, back to what you were talking about, Roots. Uh, you know, the hardware does need, be, need to be able to push it, right? So I feel like a 20% increase in field of view uh, is probably a, a pretty uh, a pretty reasonable expectation here. Yeah, I don't think people realize how much of 20% is. You were even just saying that recently. You said, I'll take 120 um that i think 120 is is good and uh anything above what i have and i i said this before when i got into the quest too um just that the the sweet spot for me made the a little bit bigger i could the field of view just a little bit but it it seemed huge to me i can't imagine 20 percent what that's going to feel like that's going to be huge right and we're not even going to have to deal with all the pimax jank to get it and people will say well pimax is too whatever well everybody nobody runs it there everybody runs it in the middle right so they're more like 140 or whatever it is i don't know um i never paid attention to that uh headset too much but um i think 120 is great yeah so if you think a 20 percent increase isn't all that much uh ask the valve index owners uh the ones that didn't switch over to quest 2 when it released why they didn't switch mm -hmm. and most of them will tell you it's because they can't uh, go back from the wider field of view that they experience on the index. Well, I mean, is it a, a night and day difference? It, it's just a modest, you know, 20 degrees or so that got added uh, into that headset. But according to these people, it makes a pretty big difference. And uh, so I would expect to see a similar increase uh, on the next generation PlayStation VR, uh, because again, the guy said it, right? Yeah. Yeah, he specifically said, and everything else has been coming true, right? So why would this be any different? And uh, the biggest thing is uh, competitor is has got it out there. Um, and I'm sure that they're, you know, we may just be hearing about this um, from HTC, but I'm sure Sony's uh, got little birds that let them know what other people are doing. So they're very aware of what their competitors are putting out or coming out with soon as well. UT2K9 now says, would that cause distortion? No. No, well, a lot of that distortion, too, has to do with uh, the, the lens design. And uh, uh, for what it's worth, Sony has a very different type of lenses in their, their PSVR headset. The best, in my opinion. I love their lenses. There is absolutely zero glare in, in those mm -hmm. lenses. They're the best on the market, even today. Now, with that said, um, you know, People who have Pimax talk about edge distortion, but it's only off in the far edges at the widest field of view. So we're talking 200 degrees. You start to see field of view uh, distortions around 170. 
So, uh, no, I think 120 is very easy to pull off without any kind of edge distortion. And let me assure you, if there were, Sony wouldn't bring it to market. You know, they're not, they're not Pimax. Well, that's true. I, I'm, uh, but he was um, more responding to Wolverazza was asking. He said, I heard someone talking about using curved lenses um, to expand it. And he, he wondered if that would work. Um, and, whether, and then ETK was wondering if that would cause distortion on that or not, which I don't have any idea if that would or not. I'm sure there's a way to do well, it. Well, well, by definition, that would be using a distortion to to increase the field of view. Certainly, a hundred percent capable. But what you have to do uh, when you're distorting uh, the light using these these wide uh, extra curved lenses, you have to make up for that distortion in the software. So it it really uh, it's going to take someone who really knows what they're doing on the programming side of the equation to correct the distortion that's being caused optically through the lenses. Yeah. And there's experts that do that. So um, if they can, they'll, they'll do it. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. This, this is something that HTC is, I think, trying to do with their newest headsets. They're, they're using lenses to increase the field of view. Yeah. Anyway, uh, does the game cat says 120 is cool. Yeah, man. I mean, we're, we're it's around 95 to 100 right now. I think like the Oculus Quest is uh, 95 degrees. I mean, they, they claim it's 110, but it's not. When you measure it, it's like 95 degrees. So uh, if we get a legit 120 that's actually 120, it's going to be a noticeable bump. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, as mentioned earlier, Sony has stated that the cable is necessary to achieve the high standard that PlayStation 5 brand demands. Many people hold out hopes, however, that a wireless version will be released somewhere down the line. Mr. Mallinson spoke on this as well. Roots, what time is it? Quote time. Quote time. Again, this is early 2019. This is Dominic... Mallinson, and again, he is the vice president of R&D at Sony Interactive Entertainment. So uh, he says, quote, being tethered to this cable is inconvenient. And it's not just about getting tangled up in the cable. It's about the restriction in your motion. It's about how you set things up, how you configure the system, where you store it. Let's face it. Having a mess of cables in your living space is just not attractive. So this is something that we have to solve in order to get wider adoption. Mallinson suggested that 60 gigahertz wireless tech is steadily improving and it could be a viable option. Although he said that wireless might well just remain an option because it will be more costly than the cable. Other insiders have suggested that P PS5's Wi-Fi 6 capability was included just for this very reason. So I wouldn't say that a future wireless model is out of the question, but it'll likely be some time before we see such a product. So here we have Mr. Mallinson Roots um, saying that this mess of cables is a, a barrier to adoption. And this very much lines up with what Jim Ryan said this year as the reason why they're going to the single cable. A single USB cable, clean setup, not cumbersome, but still able to produce uh, a high quality, you know, unprecedented quality VR experience at, as Mr. Mallinson says here, an affordable price. You know, that's part of the equation as well. We don't want to sell people a thousand dollar headset, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you're already having to buy the hardware on top of it. Uh, I just saw the flash in the, the video. So I'm assuming people are seeing a commercial and you're seeing a some kind of a warning there, um, which is weird because we had a good 45 minutes of smooth sailing. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, are you saying you think that we're off now? No, or? we're not. We're, we're still on. I just uh, just okay. warning people that they're probably watching a commercial as they came back into this the stream there. All right, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the cable versus wireless here as people uh, click through their commercials because this is a hot button for some people. We saw Anthony damn near lose his mind because Sony didn't decide to do not only wireless, 
but he didn't want it tethered to the PS5 at all. He basically wanted Sony to make an Oculus Quest. Like, why would they do that? Like, Sony isn't trying to be what Facebook's trying to be. VR, again, to them, it's a peripheral for their console. They're a console company, not a VR company. Uh, so, uh, you know, I get why people uh, people who love their Quest don't want to go back to, to corded VR. But trust me, the, the type of games that Sony is about to deliver, uh, it's going to be very difficult for them to affordably uh, put it in the air. Well, I agree. And uh, it's weird that, um, I mean, I get it. I love the standalone headset. You know what I mean? But, okay, let me let me think of this. You know, if I go to, which I never go there, McDonald's for a hamburger, I'm not expecting every hamburger to be out there to be like a mcdonald's hamburger or even be a hamburger maybe it's a chicken sandwich you know what i mean like at some point uh, what oculus is doing doesn't need to equal everything else and i don't i don't necessarily want oculus to i don't <laughs> want everything to be just like that i love the playstation vr and what playstation games right it's like going to, to Chick-fil-A and saying, don't you see how many Big Macs McDonald's are selling? <laughs> what are you doing, Chick-fil-A? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, stop making chicken. Give us a Big Mac, bro. And then I'll feel sick for an hour or two. At least that's the last time I ate my Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Mr. Mallinson, uh again, um, he listed this as a big barrier. It's funny how much, how many of the things he said two years ago line up one to one with things that Jim Ryan talked about this year, even before the PS5 VR was revealed. Uh, the things that Ryan listed as uh, as lessons learned from Gen One PlayStation VR, right? It's it's almost like they're reading from the same script, and uh, we now know that at least initially. Their solution to this cumbersome wire setup is going to be a single wire setup. Uh, but again, I've heard other people suggest that the PS5's Wi-Fi was specifically built with wireless VR in mind. So I, I wouldn't c consider it completely out of the question that maybe later in the PS5 life cycle that they do a wireless VR headset. Uh, but I don't think that... Um, or an adapter. That we're or an adapter, right? It could be a dongle. You're absolutely right. And he just just um, literally said it was too expensive to really put in there. So why? I mean, why not just wait a year or whatever time, and then you bring it out as an accessory, and then everybody can afford it, and everybody's happy. Wolveraza doesn't have to jump off a cliff. He's happy as well because uh, he's really upset about that cable, Wes. Uh, Wolveraza says it has to be wire, or it can be wireless. And dedicated to PlayStation almost has to be in order to work correctly. This is a meet or beat moment for anyone to have a chance against Oculus. Now we need to talk about this because I keep hearing people say this to have a chance against Oculus. Sony and Oculus are not trying to do the same thing. They're not trying to be the same thing. Oculus is selling headsets to the everyman. They're selling headsets to my dad, to my aunts and uncles, people who don't game. They're using games. They're using games to get in, to, to bring gamers in, but their end game is and always has been to build a social platform so that they can study people, so that they can collect data. Uh, this is why they're building this, okay? They're, they're not trying to replace the Xbox. They're not trying to replace a Nintendo Switch. They're trying to replace Chromebooks, laptops. This is what they're looking to do. Sony, on the other hand, they're not trying to be a VR company primarily. Sony already has their business. There are 120 million PlayStation 4 consoles sold more than that at, at this point. Uh, out there in the wild so sony is selling their vr to be a peripheral for their consoles it's an extension of their consoles they're, they're trying to add value 
to the PlayStation 5. That's what they're trying to do with VR. They're not trying to be, uh, you know, the, the man when it comes to VR. And, uh, you know, Xbox guys said the same, the same types of things. When you look at the spec sheet of the Xbox versus the PlayStation 5, they, they say, look at our spec sheet and look at theirs. How could they possibly compete? And you know how Sony always answers that question? How Jim Ryan always answers that question? He says, we will let our games speak for themselves. And that's what they're going to do here. If you think that Sony can't compete with Oculus based on, on uh, whether there's a wire or not, wait till you see the games that they put out with this thing. It's going to be stuff the likes of which we have never seen. When you look at all these next-gen features with the uh, features that only PlayStation 5 has, at least at this point, um, we're going to see games that no other system can pull off. And I think that's what's going to set them apart. And I, I don't think that they're trying to compete with Oculus. They don't want to sell headsets to my dad. They're trying to sell headsets to their 120 million hardcore gamers. And they know that the way you do that is by providing the highest quality games. And right now you have to have a cable to provide that. Yeah, absolutely. And every one of these games um, that we're showing are potential games that could come to VR because it's in their library, their exclusives to Sony and their next level, their next gen games. And they're all games we wanna play. And if we could play them in the headset, like if you're telling me I can go play Demon Souls and God of War and Horizon West, Gran Turismo 7, you know, all of these games, if you know, in VR, uh, that's a it's a no-brainer. I'm, I'm going to go to where I can play those games in VR. I can't play RE8 right now or, you know, in um, PC. Probably it may never come to PC VR. Um, you know, and uh, granted, uh, none of them have been uh, confirmed, but like these are the games that are in their library and these are the games I believe are coming to VR. Like, what's going to keep them from making any of these games in virtual reality? We're at that stage now um, where AAA games are coming into VR. And uh, we have a AAA company, uh, Sony, that just focuses on these games. Whereas Oculus, yeah, they funded Asgard's Wrath years ago. And they funded some other big games years ago. And they've shown us that they're not funding the biggest games anymore. They may be bringing RE4 in. Um, but it's not going to be our, it's not going to be on the level of RE8 as far as graphically or, um, gameplay wise. So I don't know, man. Um, and that was one of the things I was going to bring up. Somebody had mentioned in the uh, discord about the gyroscope on the controllers, right? For RE8 and how that's, um, not available in the PlayStation 4 version. And it's almost showing you that it's going to be a PlayStation VR game. Well, he said that if it's going to be a PSVR game, that it's going to be on PS5. And I certainly would, uh, I, I can see him drawing that comparison. It's just weird to me that uh, you don't have the same functionality on PS4. The controllers are capable of that on PS4. Right. I mean, they have gyros in them too. So I don't, I don't know what they're thinking there with that. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, Oculus is going to have some great games too. I mean, we're going to see stuff coming for, for Quest uh, that's going to be big, like huge AAA games coming to Oculus Quest. That That's not what I'm trying to suggest is that not that they won't have awesome AAA games, but the kind of fidelity that that's going to come uh, from the PlayStation 5 can't be done uh, on a mobile chipset and it can't be, uh, you know, affordably transmitted through the air at least at this time so um again people don't understand you know what it's going to mean when we start to see uncharted vr and last of us vr and god of war vr and grand theft auto vr these games are coming and uh as dedicated as playstation 5 has been to a generational leap with regards to flat games we're going to see that same generational leap be applied to VR as well. And at least for a while, uh, PlayStation 5 VR is going to be head and shoulders above everything else. Yeah. Hey, Scion VR even said he's going to be picking one up. He's convinced now. And that's coming from a uh, 
a person that a week ago was saying that's probably never going to happen so yeah uh anyway um let's see I i lost my spot here okay so um back to the uh the the features uh, the hardware features that are going to enable sony to uh to make these next gen groundbreaking super immersive vr games uh and we're on to the one that uh that, that did get leaked this past week one another one that people were really surprised about a lot of people were surprised and excited by uploads revelation that eye tracking will be included in the next Sony HMD. So uh, eye tracking in the PlayStation 5 VR routes. And uh, there has been some debate as to whether the gains that come from dynamic foveated rendering would be worth the cost to add this to the hardware. John Carmack commented on Twitter uh, that people expecting a tenfold performance increase from eye tracking and dynamic fo- foveated rendering, these people are going to be in for a rude, rude awakening. Uh, he said that in reality, the gains aren't quite double the gains that can be had with fixed foveated rendering. Now, with that said, Oculus Quest uses fixed foveated rendering quite aggressively, and the foveation line can be quite an immersion breaker. I mean, anytime you're on oculus quest this foveated rendering he's talking about i mean it, it's it's very prominent right you can see the lines you know not so much on quest 2 but on quest 1 i mean that they use that ffr a lot and it is very obvious and it does break immersion yeah um beyond that uh facebook's application of dynamic foveated rendering has always come in the context of conventional hardware be it mobile hardware or pc So it stands to reason that PlayStation 5's custom memory architecture could significantly reduce the latency that has limited Facebook when it comes to the application of this technology. Now, with all that said, people should not assume that dynamic foveated rendering is the only reason that eye tracking is being included. So um, eye tracking, people losing their shit because they can't believe eye trackings in this headset roots. And uh, again, Anthony took straight to Twitter to uh, discount uh, what can be done with dynamic foveated rendering, invoking John Carmack's name. And guess what, Roots? Hmm. He responded. John Carmack responded to Anthony by uh, backing him up and saying, you know, uh, people who are thinking that this thing's going to uh, increase a performance by 10 or, or, or in for a rude awakening, uh, it's more like double or not even double uh, what you get from using fixed foveated rendering. Wow. Wow. Carmack backing up Anthony. That's awesome, actually. But you know, what's funny is, though, it's not like a, the, just in the statement, it's not only about um, the, the foveated rendering or the, you know, the being able to rendering at all. I mean, what other reasons could you have eye tracking? I mean, it for like realistic avatars, wouldn't it be nice if you're like looking at somebody and your their eyes are doing what they're supposed to, what they're doing in real life, right? That would add reality to that. I mean, there's there's just little different things that we've heard over the years and we've all dreamed about um eye tracking. And uh it's weird that now I could have sworn that was on Anthony's wish list a year ago for PC VR. <laughs> right. And now that it's right, on right. on PlayStation. It's like it's it's garbage. That's weird, man. That's weird, bro. I didn't see these tweets, but now I'm I'm intrigued. I might go check them out. So um so Anthony says uh that you know the gains from uh dynamic foveated rendering might not be as much as you think. Just ask John Carmack. Carmack chimes in and says, uh yeah, that's absolutely right. It, it's not quite as much as you would think it is. So I reply to that, well, um, well, no, he explains uh, on top of Anthony's comment that um, people's eyes are constantly moving when in VR and they're being tracked constantly and that somehow the, uh, the, the eye tracking trying to keep up with this causes some kind of latency, which amounts to blur in the, uh, in the, the pictures being rendered. So, 
my response to this, uh, you know, I, I replied to Carmack saying, well, I'm sure Sony isn't just adding this stuff in there and paying for this hardware just so that they can add this onto their spec sheet. Obviously it's useful to them. So maybe this latency that you're talking about is being mitigated by their custom architecture, right? Because, you know, that that's what the PlayStation five is custom built to do is, is, uh, it loads directly into the video memory to reduce this very latency that he's talking about. So obviously Sony's going to be able to get more out of this kind of thing than Facebook would be able to on conventional hardware. So that's how I reply to him. And uh, he replied back to me. Oh, well, yeah, that's absolutely right. It's certainly useful. Um, all I'm saying is that people should probably not expect this thing to uh, make it 10 times more efficient. And that's all that he was saying. And um, which I thought it was cool that he replied to me and Anthony, I thought that was awesome. But um, I think that, that, that uh, again, I think it's a pretty valid point that Sony's not just paying for this stuff for nothing. Obviously they're able to use it. And, uh, and just because Facebook hasn't been able to break through with it yet, doesn't mean that Sony using their custom hardware isn't going to be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you. I think there's a reason for it. There's a lot of reasons for it. I think it'll, um, I'm excited about it. This is one more thing that uh, we've wanted and it's finally coming. And uh, well, allegedly, if, if everything's uh, I, I expected to, um, was this actually part of the rumor or is this for sure, for sure? What? The Toby, the try tracking. This is what this is supposedly confirmed. This is what upload reported. Okay. So that, I mean, it's, it's confirmed until, I mean, it's confirmed, but it's not until it comes, they release the spec sheet. And cause I saw somebody saying, uh, I think it was gamer tag saying upload took a lot of heat. Um, and uh, anything like this will until it's confirmed. Well, I mean, this then... is, I'm sure, I'm sure they were told this stuff in confidence. Right. And they decided to say, uh, you know, they decided to burn some bridges and go public with it. Yeah. Well, we'll see if that works out for him. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm kind of glad to hear about it, but, but, uh, but, but again, um, think about this. So, so Carmax whole thing was, is that it's not as practical to really crank up this uh, dynamic foveated rendering because of latency when it comes to rendering the frames. Right. Yeah. So think about what Sony uh, talked about when they were talking about the internal hardware of the PlayStation 5. They were talking about uh, being able to load video memory so fast that by the time that you turn your head, it renders the scene so that there is no loading. It just instantly loads as you turn your head. It's that fast. So it stands to reason that the hardware that they've built here is uniquely capable of doing the kind of rendering that Carmex says Facebook's struggling with, right? I mean, that I'm not, I'm only a layman, but you know, two plus two equals four here. I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you. Um, I think Sony knows what they're doing, and uh, their that hardware is is next level, and it's different than everything else that's came out before. And um, I'm looking forward to no pop ins because I can't even say on PC VR these days that I'm not seeing pop ins in some games, right? But I mean. Uh, I think it's going to be next level. So uh, GamerTech says, uh, now I just got an advertisement. Yeah, uh, Roots' internet keeps dropping in and out and making the stream reload. And when the stream reloads, it puts an ad in there. So sorry yeah. about that. It's it's not intentional. Yeah. Oh, uh, it could. It benefits us, I guess. We do get ad revenue, but it's not intentional. No, oh. no, it's nothing. We're getting nothing from ad revenue. No. All of all of the money that we get from YouTube is from your guys' uh, donations and the tip train. So big thanks for all of those who uh, support. Absolutely. We get like a nickel. <laughs> we get a nickel for ads. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, I think that uh, that the. Uh, the gains from uh, eye tracking along with some other things uh, is something that to the, the totality of it is something to be excited about. But for now, we're going to move on um, because, you know, Roots, uh, you know, as shocked as people were to hear this from Upload VR, uh, it wasn't the most surprising thing to me because way back in early 2019, Dominic Mallinson spoke on eye tracking as well. 
saying that uh, he thinks that it, quote, has the greatest potential to change the VR user experience at a fundamental level. Mallinson said that eye tracking would be useful in next generation headsets for things like understanding user intent, enhancing social presence, reading user biometrics, and of course, foveated rendering. But for Mallinson, it's what eye tracking will enable in terms of input that's most exciting. Quote, that's my number one point about next generation VR. Gaze will allow a much, much richer user interaction. So, you know, upload says eye tracking. Everybody says, well, really? But I mean, here's the guy two years ago saying that this was the one thing that's going to make next gen headsets, next gen headsets. So it's not a big shocker. And, uh, you know, immediately the negative Nancy's out there start shooting down foveated rendering. Like it's the only thing eye tracking does when here we have the, the head of R and D saying eye tracking uh, or, or foveated rendering is just the cherry on the, on the cherry on top, you know, gaze based interactions, being able to tell what people are looking at is going to fundamentally change the experience in game. Uh, and again, you know, Carmack can say what he want to about the usefulness of uh, dynamic foveated rendering. I guarantee you, I'd bet my bank account that Oculus Quest 3 will have eye tracking in it. Yeah, and then everybody will be raving about it. Uh, it's so weird to me that everybody, like you said, the negative Nancys, there are the, the people in the world that they look at everything through the half uh, glass is half empty, right? And so they read this and they're like, instantly jump into all sorts of conclusions um and looking at one aspect of it and uh and there's several aspects of it that we haven't even talked about um besides the social aspect which i mentioned which i think will be huge and then um the gaze base like you know them being able to to know what you're looking at and then changing things because of it right um i don't know i i you know i don't know all the intricacies of how all that stuff but i i it, to me, it sounds like it's adding up to a, a richer experience like you described. The things that they're going to do with this eye tracking, we can't even conceive of yet. We have no idea. All we know about it is it's going to make our jaws drop and we're going to go, wow, I've never seen anything. I've never thought of anything like that before. I mean, again, we keep going through these features one by one, but what we're failing to do is look at the totality of it. I mean, when you look at high resolution, field of view, when you look at haptics, when you, when you look at HDR and, and gaze-based interactions and dynamic foveated rendering, this is all one headset using all of these things in conjunction together to provide an experience that we've never seen before. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Exciting time for sure. So on the surface, it's quite obvious that this feature set, when put in the hands of Sony's expert developers, uh, will produce the most engaging and immersive content that we've ever experienced, which is pretty much what I just said. However, when you take into consideration this hardware being used with the other groundbreaking advancements in optimization, that is when you really start to see the big picture for where it's all headed. When you consider the performance leaps and features that are coming with new technologies like Unreal Engine 5, now combine that with this headset and PlayStation 5's unique hardware architecture, now you're starting to see why things are truly exciting here. The big picture, you know, everything in its totality working together. Uh, I mean, when you look at it that way, the 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 negative things, the, the the wireless, this all becomes very small. You know what I mean? It just uh, uh, in the big picture, people's criticisms uh, really seem pretty in insignificant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Onakazi says it looks to me the negative Nancys are just trying to keep people from expecting too much. I have heard pos podcasters hype foveated rendering like it's magic is it a bonus question mark yes uh but you're missing the last five minutes of the conversation the foveated right. rendering is the cherry on top 
everything else that comes along with the eye tracking, the things that we 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 think about and we are the things we have no idea um, what they're using them for. It, it's there's more to it than just the foveated rendering. If you're just looking at it, the foveated rendering, then absolutely don't get your expectations up. Carmack was right. Um, but if you're you're looking outside the box, like Wes was just saying, all those things that they just said, all the combinations of the hardware of the Sony, um, uh, the PS5 combined with all this, I mean, it's, it's going to make that next level experience uh, happen. But I guess we, we won't know until it comes out and it blows everybody's mind and then it, people will act like they always said it was awesome. And uh, that'll be a good time to talk about it again because I'll be pointing out that they didn't. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's a weird time. Yeah, so let's, let's look at the totality of this one more time. Uh, Sony, over the last year, has uh, invested over $400 million in Epic Games, developers of the Unreal Engine. Incidentally... Uh, we have internal court documents from the Apple versus Epic case that showed that Epic recently, within the last few years, offered to develop uh, a VR game for Sony's next-gen VR system. That aside, uh, when you look at the uh, advancements in optimization that are coming with Unreal Engine 5, the fact that it uses software-based ray tracing, so you don't even need to have baked-in ray tracing in the hardware, even though Sony already does have baked-in hardware-based ray tracing. Uh, the fact that um, the, the, the rendering, um, the, the fact that Unreal Engine is able to render polygons at an exponentially orders of magnitude higher rate than Unreal Engine 4. When you, when you think about these kind of advancements in optimization, being run on the PlayStation 5, which is, you know, again, custom built to do a specific thing very well. And the thing that it does well is exactly the thing that it would need to do well for dynamic foveated rendering to, to be a... a, a a useful feature in VR. When you add that with the next level audio engine, you know the dedicated custom audio engine built into the PlayStation 5. Then you have the haptics, the next gen haptics, not just regular haptics, next gen haptics baked into the controllers as well as the head mounted display. When you consider that that's gonna make the, the experience more comfortable for new users. When you consider all of this together, wide field of view, high contrast screens at 2K resolution per eye. The totality of it is that this is a tool set for the best game developers in the world to make the best games that we've ever seen. And, you know, while people are getting hyped up about these individual specs, I think they're a little bit misguided uh, in, in their enthusiasm but there is true reason to be excited here. If you have the uh, vision or the ability to see the big picture here and, and, and add everything together and see where it's all going. And that's kind of what I've tried to do here with this talk uh, is, um, is not only point out that we're not surprised, we've known what this headset's gonna be for two years, but point out why we've been excited for the past two years, why it's going to be good, and uh, what we can expect when this thing finally drops. Now, um, so lastly, why, why hasn't Sony come out and called this device PlayStation VR 2 yet? I mean, everybody's calling it PSVR 2, except for Sony. Well, maybe it isn't time for the reveal just yet. Or maybe... This next product is going to be such a vast departure from anything that we've ever seen that PSVR 2 just isn't an appropriate name for it. You know, maybe, you know, PSVR was so different from what this next headset's going to be that they don't feel comfortable calling it a sequel to that because it's so vastly different. So uh, I think... PS5 VR is probably a more likely name for it. PS5 VR is probably 
just as likely to be what it's called or more so than PSVR 2. And I think that's probably what we should refer to it as until we hear different. So are you saying it's not going to be playable on the PlayStation 4, which I know it's not. I saw somebody say hey, that you know earlier what? today. You, you know what? The, the same guy that, that criticizes this headset for not having high enough specs six months ago was criticizing uh, the fact that it might not play on the on the PS4 console. What about them? You know, what about the PS4 owners? They're done, dude. Like, there's a point you move on, dude. Like, the next generation came out, and I said this before uh, a while ago, and I wasn't knocking anybody that has a three or four generation old thing. But I, for me, I can't. It doesn't. I can't compute. I need the newest thing. And at some point um everything gets held back from that head that they have to cut ties dude like it's a different system you want to play vr on playstation 4 here's the headset you can play with it you want to play the next gen here's you know what i mean like they're it's apples and oranges man there it's such a generational leap um i i hope that playstation 4 gets left out in the dust you know what it's i mean it's like it's the anti PSVR. It's not the PSVR too. It's like the mirror opposite of what PSVR was. Everything, the only thing that's going to be similar in, from the PS5 VR versus PSVR is the game library. You know, it's going to have these awesome exclusives, but even that's going to be different because I feel like we're going to get known IPs this generation where last. Last generation, we didn't get any known IPs. It was all new IPs. Uh, so I think even on that level, it's going to be somewhat of a mirror opposite of what PlayStation VR was. And uh, in fact, I think it's going to be fairly unique uh, as compared to any VR headset in the world. And uh, is it going to uh, replace the Oculus Quest? Absolutely not. But I don't think that's what it's intended to do. And while Facebook certainly see sony as a competitor for them i don't think we could say the same for Fa for sony uh the way they look at facebook well let's talk about the elephant in the room wes are we finally going to get a sports game <laughs> are we finally going to see madden football are we finally going think... to see nba 2k or you know what i mean like it's time it's time i think i think that if we see those types of games in the next five years, it's going to be because PlayStation VR 2 was so successful. I think that, uh, and this is pure speculation at this point, I think that the Oculus Quest is going to continue to uh, ramp up uh, the general public's awareness of VR and, and in large part, the general public's appetite for VR. And I think that when PlayStation 5 VR comes out, that uh, it's really going to, for the first time since the big onset of VR, it's going to show gamers that uh, they're not going to have to uh, settle for less to come to, to VR. A lot of hardcore gamers, these people that are so trained on graphics their whole life, uh, they haven't bought into VR because the, the games haven't been pretty enough to convince them to even try the headset on. That's going to change with PlayStation 5 VR because all of these optimization uh, enhancements uh, all and these next-gen display panels and next-gen features are going to finally provide that enriching experience that hardcore gamers find appealing. And when that happens, it's Katie bar the door. Uh, I think that everybody's going to be jumping in, EA Sports included, to uh, to get themselves, uh, you know, get a game into the VR catalog. And uh, that's not to even mention the fact that Apple's going to be entering the fray. And while they're not going to have a very big impact on gaming, what they are going to do is uh, make VR cool, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to make it something that's a luxury item for people to own. And uh, it's again, it's just going to raise the pro profile of the uh the medium that much more and you know who uh, who else will get into it because of this sony system who is a competitor with sony to some extent um who, who we know is going to come into vr eventually nintendo as soon as they start seeing sony putting all their ips out they're going to be like oh man dude like if they're not already ready to drop something they're going to be rushing to get something out um which i think something's in the work anyway 
Uh, you know, I, I think you nailed it a long time ago when you said the first time somebody from Nintendo or the creators of uh, Mario put on that headset and played Astrobot, there's no way they didn't see the potential of what they could do in VR um, with what their games are, right? Not only that, but Nintendo are innovators in the space of, uh, of uh, AR. I mean, when you go back and look at some of the capabilities of the 3D, uh, the 3DS, I mean, there are 3D spatial AR games programmed into that thing. And uh, not to mention the fact that there's glasses, glasses free working 3D on that display panel. Uh, these guys at Nintendo are wizards with this tech. And we're talking about a 10 year old handheld system here. Um, they're already working on this stuff in their laboratories. It's just uh, a matter of it becoming affordable enough for them to make money on it because they're not like Sony and Facebook. They will not sell their consoles at a, at, at even, even cost. Uh, they're going to make a profit on it. That's the reason why their consoles are always under spec. Uh, I think that, that, that eventually they're going to have a, a AR or a VR headset uh probably within the next five to six years uh but when it comes out it's going to be under spec versus the other headsets on the market but people are still going to buy it up because it's going to be a good experience and it's going to have mario and it's going to have zelda and all of those ips that people love and uh i think that sony's very much going to have the same thing going on for it uh in just a, a year or two let me ask you this um so now that we finally see that it's absolutely true. All this stuff that, that Dominic Mallinson said two years ago was coming, is coming. We're getting this high-tech next-gen headset that he promised us those years ago. You know, when Jim Ryan said that this headset wasn't coming this year, a lot of people within the PSVR community just immediately assumed that it would be early 2022 that we would get this. Uh, you know, knowing that all this high tech expensive stuff is going to be in this headset, are you at all worried that not only this isn't going to come early in 2022, are you worried that we might not see this thing in 2022 at all? Yeah, well, especially with, uh, you know, parts being difficult to get a hold of, even though uh, it's not got as many bells and whistles in it as a, say, a wireless Quest 2, it's still technology and, you know, um, it might get pushed back a bit you know it may have been planned for early 2022 and they just said look we just can't produce the you know not there's nothing worse and i'm sure they're they're they've got to be just killing themselves man thinking think about what the sales could do for playstation 5 if they were readily available on the on the shelves like every other thing has been you know in the past right now it's it's limited by not, you can't get it it's very difficult to get and so, and things aren't getting easier. So I, I could totally see how things could have gotten pushed back even more than what they were planning on, which probably was a little bit further than what we want as well. So I don't know. Yeah, I think that it's, um, I would be concerned. I, I, you know, based on the tech that's in this thing compared to what's on the market now, uh, I would be concerned that maybe we wouldn't get it next year, uh, but I'm not. And the reason why I'm not is because developers are getting dev kits now. Mm, true. And if, if devs are getting dev kits now, that means that they finalized the design of this thing. They know now what it's going to be down to the letter. They've, they've got the entire thing planned out. It's just a matter of getting the parts and putting them together now. So I do think we're going to see this in 2022. Whether it be early or late, I'm not sure. Uh, but I do think we're going to see it next year. And uh, what you're saying there is absolutely true. There's a silicon shortage in the world right now. Chips are hard to come by. And that's another reason why I think we should all be thankful that this isn't a wireless headset. You know, standalone headsets need processors in them. They need a lot more silicon than a wired headset. A wired headset is a screen. And screens don't need silicon. So you can mass produce them pretty easily. So um, I think we should all be a little bit thankful, mm. uh, at least at this current time, uh, that it's not wireless. A wired headset is a much more viable technology for today's uh, climate. Yeah, and they could have a lot on the shelf already. For, you know what I mean? Or gotten on, just been mass producing. And the, I'm hoping that they just flood the earth and uh, 
And at that time, somebody's given me a PlayStation 5 and it just hooks right up and I get to play. Uh, but I'm excited. I, I mean, time's flying by so fast. I think it'll we'll be there and, and we'll be playing this thing soon enough, right? Yeah, I don't think it's going to seem very long at all. We're already almost halfway through 2021, dude. If this thing is coming out early 2022, I mean, we're going to have it in no time. Like, it's going to be like that and we're going to be playing this thing. I mean, I linked this... Uh, this episode of the Monday show in the description below, that's exactly a year ago. Go back and watch that and think about the state of things when I made that video. And that'll show you just how, you know, in a blink of an eye, how fast things can change. So we're going to have this head headset and uh, before you know it, and it's going to be truly amazing. Yeah. I can't wait. And I guarantee you, Anthony's going to buy one. He's going to want to. He's going to want to buy one. He He's not, not going to be able it. to. Yeah, dude. He's well, not going to be able to get the uh, console. So what? how is it standing now? Is he saying he's not getting it? Because I didn't see the tweets and everything. Or is it just that? He says, secret? Sony needs to show me a reason that I need to buy a PlayStation 5, bro. Well, you, That's what he said well, before. You, now, now the headset comes out, and he's like, uh, he's like, 2K per eye. Sony 2019 called and they want their headset back, which is kind of funny because, uh, you know, half of what our whole thing here that we our deep dive was about the predictions back in 2019. Right. So it's kind of funny that he said that because it kind of lines up with what we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, it's a weird time. And uh, and I, I, I can't wait to see what happens when I think you're right. I think he's going to it's going to blow everybody away. And I can't fault Anthony for, you know, for, I mean, uh, his mind thinks a little bit differently in a different way as far as this VR. He comes from different approaches, and that's why his podcast is so awesome because uh, you're you're going to get unique um, uh, thoughts on everything. So, um, for sure. PD joining the chat says, there's plenty of chips available at local seaside and fish. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Now yeah, I want some doesn't? fish and chips. Yeah, for sure. Ray Del Tor is trying to get a hold of a PlayStation 5 right now. Check Walmart in the next couple of di couple of days. Ray, there is a rumor, um, even though Wes kind of kiboshed it, but we don't know um, that there's going to be physical copies in Walmart in the next two days. And uh, you may be one of the people telling us thank you for giving you the uh, heads up. Yeah, if you know people that work at Walmart, I definitely uh, call and see how they're feeling. You know, say hello. Yeah. And then just happen to uh, mention... Hey, have you heard anything on the PlayStation 5? You know what's weird about it, Wes? With all this, and this is, this is no, it makes no sense. With all the scalping and all the, they bought them all up quickly and they're being sold online. They could have just solved that by making people go into stores and buy them. And then the whole problem disappears because people are lazy. And yeah, some people still would run in and get them, but it's just going to, it changes everything. But they never did that. And every time I go to Best Buy or anywhere and I see that sign on the door, it kind of pisses me off. We don't have them in store. And I'm thinking, why not? Like, you know what I mean? It just makes no sense. From the, from the story that they tell us, it makes no sense. It doesn't logically add up. And uh, uh, But that's 2021. Logic is out the door, bro. So, yeah, Absolutely. Uh, traveling man 3775 says Canadian stores is what he heard. So, uh, you heard it here, Scion. Uh, you be on the lookout, bro. You, you're you're going to want to buy one of these now, uh, so that you can play this next generation VR that you're longing for, uh, in just a few short months' time, apparently. Well, and I was just gonna say, and I almost forgot, um, Anthony wants a reason why, uh, of course, this is in the past, why he get yeah, a reason why he should play buy the PlayStation 5. Um, Wes six months ago would tell you that there's no way he's playing any flat games. It's a waste of time. It's all VR. And now he's having all night sessions playing flat games because they're that good and that, that next gen. Um, and we're not even in the VR part of it yet. And now add VR. And uh, uh, I don't even know if I'm going to be coming out of it. So uh, PD says that his wife got him his PS5 uh, from a shop, hmm. physical copy in the window yeah well and that, i don't know that's i guess that's definitely worth checking out for sure uh i i've everywhere i've looked that it's the same thing here it's there's just signs everywhere 
because I'm sure they hear it a million times. Do you have any PS5s? Uh, the sign. Read the sign. <laughs> uh, PD also says that he's uh, addicted to Returnal as well. The game is so good. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm I'm pissed off at it right now. I stayed up all night last night playing Returnal on one run, right? So I cleared out the whole biome pretty much. Everywhere I could go, I went and killed all the enemies and got all the power-ups and leveled up my character. My health bar was uh, 150% because I kept leveling it up too. And I got all kinds of guns. I I, I moved my weapon proficiency to level five. Um, I had all kinds of uh, suit augments enabled and uh useful parasites i had everything perfect the way i wanted except um uh, my health wasn't full so like uh, you know two-thirds of my health was, was empty which was almost a full normal bar but again my i'd made my bar 50 percent longer and i wanted to fill that up so i had two choices left two places i could go there was either the boss i could go face the boss without a full health bar or there was a containment room. And a containment room is a room that has a sealed door. It's a vault. And when you get in the vault, it's just full of enemies. There's so many enemies in there, it's nuts. But there's also a bunch of power-ups in there. There's health power-ups, there, there's, there's, there's guns, there's everything you could want uh, to level your character up, as long as you survive. And I didn't want to go fight the boss with... Uh, with less than full health. So I decided to take on the containment room because I was already pretty powerful. Uh, I'm not worried about these enemies. I can take them. So I go in immediately. I get swarmed by the weaker enemies. Uh, they hit me one time, but besides that, I cleared them all out and then come the heavier enemies, the, the mini bosses, if you will, three of them ganging up on me. And I had a tough time, man. I had a tough time and I didn't know if I was going to make it. But I did. I ended up killing the three of them. And yes, I, when I killed them, that's when my weapon proficiency leveled up to the next thing. Perfect. Now all I have to do, I mean, I'm one more hit and I'm dead. But all I got to do is go collect this health. It's laying around everywhere. I just killed the enemies. You know, everything's great. I take one step and I have a bunch of the lower enemies spawn in unexpectedly. Mm. They hit me one time from behind. That's it. I'm dead. Game over. My five hour run scrapped to nothing. You start all over again, having made no progress because that's how this game is. If you get killed, you start all over. But if you beat the boss, it, does it take you to the next area? Okay. So, oh, yeah. God, man, that's, that's, you know, we were just joking in the Discord uh, about um, people breaking stuff <laughs> in the Tarkov channel. <laughs> I, was, I was so disgusted with it, man, when I got done. I'm like, I'm not going to be playing this again for a little while. I'm going to take a few days off because I was just so disgusted with having put all that work into getting everything perfect. I would have kicked the boss's ass if I would have just went and fought the boss, but I didn't. And I paid for it. Nah, no. Now let me ask you this, Wes, because um Wolveraza says for a flat, I like third person games more. This looks fun. Do you think this game would be just as amazing? Um, it but better if you were in the headset, but everything was the same. The environments yeah. are all around you. Cause that's the thing, and that's the thing I learned from Edge of Nowhere and other games that are third person. Um, you're still in the environment. It still blows you away. Not everything. You don't have to always have your hands in everything. It's so weird to me that it, that's such a weird thought to me. Um, being in the experience, and even if I was using a regular controller and I was playing everything with the same haptic, amazing haptics and everything else, I think there's a place for that. And um, and I think that the misconception is is that everything has to be first person and everything has to have your hands in there um it has to be a simulation yeah it's got to be a simulation well i you know everywhere i walk Wes, it's weird everywhere i walk and i look around i'm always seeing my hands they're always there bro you know what i mean like at some point the fantasy of something different <laughs> sounds appealing to me um same reason why i don't mind going in cell shaded uh environments or cartoony looking 
worlds because I can't go. I've tried, Wes. I, there's no way I can go into a cartoony world in real life. It just doesn't work. Um, my right. only experience in it is in a VR headset. So, Yeah. Uh, with regards to these third-person games, I, I think it absolutely would work in VR uh, because with me, the whole promise and joy of VR is presence. It's presence in the world. You know, it, it isn't necessarily being the character now being the character is cool uh and certainly in most games i like being the character but that isn't the coolest thing the coolest thing is being present in the world being present in the game and third person games provide that just as well as first person games do and um play play hellblade sinuous sacrifice if you don't believe me and you're going to find out just how amazing it can be to control your little character from uh, floating in the air behind them. Yeah. And it's all about presence and it's all about gameplay, you know, like they could say they took Returnal and they, they brought it into VR and they made it first person. It's not the same game and maybe it's not as fun either. Um, you know what I mean? Like you have to take into consideration the game loop and the amount of fun and how good it feels to play a game. And then just take me and put me, plop me right in VR in the environments and let everything else be the same. And uh, I think it would be amazing. Well, let me draw a picture for you here, Wolvie, since you're you're talking about needing to have your hands and shooters and all this. Imagine a third person VR game, right? Imagine Returnal specifically. That's a PlayStation 5 game. Imagine we're playing this on PlayStation 5 VR. Well, we already know that the high resolution displays in the game or in the headset are going to make this thing look almost as good as it does on your 4k panel you know especially when you consider the uh the foveated rendering and the other advancements in optimization that allow the playstation to put out these high definition graphics all right beyond that let's think about the haptics that you feel when you play returnal now imagine that extending into the headset so that you're not just feeling it in your hands and you're not just in the world, but you feel it all over instead of just in your hands. All right. <clears throat> now imagine the, the gameplay you're shooting, right? You're darting around and shooting. That's what you do when you play Returnal. It's all about movement and it's all about nonstop bullet hell shooting. But the one thing that VR does differently them flat that you can't do on flat is the way you aim right on flat you have to aim with the sticks you got a cursor you're moving it around with sticks to aim at the enemies in vr especially in playstation 5 vr it knows what you're looking at you don't even have to turn your head it knows where your eyes are pointing so the way you aim at the enemies is by looking at them now imagine, you know, the big picture all together, the gameplay experience. It's already uh, very intuitive based on the, the haptics and the feeling aspect of it. But now you don't even have to use the analogs to aim anymore. Now it's as easy as looking at the enemies. I mean, it, this thing, it sounds to me like a game you could get lost in. And yeah. it's not first person, it's third person. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that that sounds amazing to me. And uh I sign I'm signing up right now for it. Um PD says uh I guess there's a Vorpex profile that's getting worked on for Pine. You said something about Pine recently. He says it's a Zelda clone. So I need to Yeah, check I that told out. you uh I told you it looked like a game that would work well in Vorpex. <laughs> that's exactly what I said about it. Yeah, I need to check that out. I don't think I've picked that up yet. So we want to hear more about Resident Evil 8 Paradise Decay. Should I wait? to play it on ps5 vr because as uh the more i think about how awesome this headset is the more i'm inclined to just not buy it right now and wait to experience it the way it's meant to be played yeah well and that, who knows how crazy that would be right with all the haptics and stuff yeah dude you imagine jack grabs you hits you in the face and you feel it no i don't want to imagine that no, i already <laughs> have my phobia of jack bro it's scary you block his chainsaw and your hands are vibrating, you know? 
I still think the craziest part for me is is when Jack is dead and I'm talking crap to him and I shoot him one too many times and he gets back up and uh, kills me. And I I was not expecting it and it wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have kept shooting him. And uh, it was just such a scary thing, dude. It was like, what is happening here? Uh, my That's my Resident Evil 7 moment. <laughs> Hi on the icon says I'm late. Yeah, brother. Uh you're just on time to uh <laughs> to get hear the us. Ending. Thank everyone for staying up late with us. We really appreciate you guys hanging out. Um yeah, let us know what you think about PlayStation 5 VR going forward. Are you excited? Is the cable a deal breaker for you? Do you see the big picture that I tried to uh spell out for you here today? If you haven't watched the whole uh discussion go back to the beginning and uh let me try to paint a picture for you i do stumble over my words a little bit but uh those of you who i was able to reach who were on on the level with me i'd like to know what you think about the prospects for this next gen headset is it going to be as next gen as i think it is or is anthony right does 2019 want their headset back <laughs> let me know in the comments down below um again if you're new to the channel subscribe hit that bell we've got tons of great content coming up roots i finally got everything set up for streaming i'm going to be streaming a lot going forward That's awesome. uh, it, it won't be all on virtual strangers uh some of it will be on lethal weasel but some of it will be on virtual strangers so um, be on the lookout for the walking dead saints and sinners this week be on the lookout for Jupiter god giveaway stream uh, i think we're going to do and um yeah uh so uh be sure you're subscribed be sure you hit the bell uh give us a thumbs up if you like the video and um join the discord do all the things uh before we go uh pd says vorpex has a second patch and a new profile the 3d really stands out the best c 3d he's ever seen it's also better with the fov mod absolutely amazing it's now in the top 10 vorpex experiences um for a, a few people i guess uh, yeah, this is what I was saying, Roots, when we were talking about PD's uh, video the other day. I said, I'm going to I'm going to try it for two hours and see if I like it and, and send it back if I don't. But I'm going to wait a month because they're going to get better, right? The profiles are going to get better. It's going to mature a little bit. The game's going to come down in price. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, I'm going to buy in and try it and see just how good it is. Oh, you're going to buy it on Steam? Yeah, well, I mean, that's the only way I can return it if I don't like it, right? Oh, that's true, that's true. I'm just curious because that means that I wouldn't need to buy it. I could play it as well. Well, it won't be anytime soon, I can tell you that. So <laughs> if you want if you want to play it this month, then uh, you then need, I need to buy, to buy it. it. Not, and then you don't yeah. even have to worry about that. Then you get to play it for free. That actually sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I, I like it. It's my favorite <laughs> idea I've heard all day. Yeah. Uh, Paradise Decay PS5 already feels next-gen two new so psvr2 is going to be amazing you mean ps5 vr because this is nothing like psvr yeah that's what wes is westradamus it's P ps5 vr psvr or psvr2 is dead yeah, yeah psvr is dead PSV ps5 vr <laughs> is a totally different thing that's true. doesn't even have the same controllers or the same tracking technology different display technology different audio different everything different everything uh pretty from much. everybody mostly like everything is is next level on top of all the other headsets bringing the train in out of the rain for next time thank you traveling man for putting up the train uh in uh, drying it off properly you don't want to uh you know if you're going to ride it hard you don't want to put it up put it up wet that's uh that's what my mom says anyway that's what i was just about to say you know who else likes to bring the train out of the rain and, <laughs> and uh be put away wet i don't know whatever you said so <laughs> <laughs> that's a it's a it's a it's a saying down south here when you walk in you look like shit uh they say you look like you've been road hard and put up wet mm, yeah that makes uh, that fits i guess huh yeah <laughs> Dark Angel coming up with the caboose saying toot toot. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, anyway, I still got you, Dark Angel. I just now figured out streaming, but I haven't forgot you. We're going to get the Flow Weaver. So uh, stay tuned, hit the bell, and uh, we will get around to it. Absolutely. 
Anyway, with that said, friends, I'd like to thank you all once again for watching For Roots. I'm Wes. We'll see you tomorrow, friends. Bye-bye. Take it easy.